and welcome to Wall Tactics with our 2K community stream. Let's go. And right away, we got to give a heavy shout out to Wicked Joe hey. for the 50 Wall Tactics membership you get. So any of you guys sitting in there excluding daggers that are not <laughs> members, you need to collect those memberships because that is very generous of Joe. We appreciate it. It also helps you for... Yeah, we're doing the giveaway. So to be eligible, you just got to be a member, contribute to the live chat, or if you can't make it to the live chat, just comment on the video afterwards and we'll still collect um, entries for like a week. And then we're going to give away some merch to uh, some lucky gits. Yes, sir. So today we're going to talk about the possible leaks we heard about. It's going to be just a little bit, but I'm sure you guys will take that and run to the wind with it, right? So. Another thing, we'll go over Adepticon, the Golden Demon, uh, pretty much models we went over. We have pictures of every orc, well, just about every orc model that was there. We'll also talk about our personal experience, who we got to meet and talk about. And then we'll go over some questions that we have as people you know, ask us questions that we were going to go over during the stream and then end it with our normal community stream, which is where we show pictures from our Discord and everything like that. So sadly, the only picture we don't have of the Golden Demons is actually the person who won with a little icon in their thumbnail, right? That little flyer. Yeah, so we put it on the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, that was mostly my fault. So sorry about that. So for sure, thank you, Wicked Joe. Greatly appreciate it. Keep that up. Happy 2K. All day, all day, baby. Yeah. And thank you to any of you new gets in here. This is going to be a good one, and we're going to have plenty plenty to talk about so yes, first sir. let's just start off with because i don't like to leave y'all hanging and diddling so we're going to talk about the little leaks we heard you know what i'm saying so right off the back these are not super deep take it with the grain of salt if you want call me a liar i don't care knock your teeth out what we're going to do is we're going to take this extrapolate on it get hyped up about it and then keep it going so first thing we heard about the first detachment which I'm already starting to just say that's probably going to be the most competitive one, possibly, is two turns of the wall with a possible knob slash war boss detachment. So this detachment is going to favor the war bosses, the knobs, pretty much our elite infantry. Therefore, we're going to get double wall. You know, I think that's awesome. It sounds exciting, but it makes me think, like, what the heck is the wall banner doing then? Right. You know, like, well, you don't need to bring in this detachment. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Right. They just keep him with that. And they're like, he's not a part of this, even though he's called a knob, you know, so <laughs> hey, unnecessary. Oh, you get three turns of wall with him, I guess now. Right. So the, you get wall the entire game for with his unit. <laughs> yeah. So that leaves so many options out on the table because a lot of our data sheets run around the wall. I mean, if you look at our actual data sheet abilities, the more cannot, the gore cannot, the mega knobs. Knob with wall banner, Gazgul Traka with Makari. You know, that becomes the whole point of our army. And that's why we take very, it's very hard for us to stage and set up. So giving us two turns of wall pretty much double doubles our power, literally, right? So yeah, we're, we're always talking about how it's so easy to counter the wall, especially if you're going second. <sighs> and, you know, me and Eddie are always having discussions about, hey, what can we do to still be a threat outside of wall turn? I consider oh, double wall banners, and I know yeah. that people have too. You know, a shout out to Eric Forsman because it's uh, is that Eric Forman? I think that's Eric Forman, the guy I played at our last GT. And it was funny when we were playing up, he was playing Grey Knights, and he's like, um, Are you calling the wall every turn? And I was just like, oh, No, I'm not, because you know, he's just waiting the said stage on us. So I really hope when they have this double knob detachment, if they also make it on our battle round call, that would be freaking amazing. Because I know a lot of different orc players are like, Yo, like. Why do we have to wait till the battle round instead of a player turn? Excuse me, I meant to say player turn. So a player turn. So that's a big deal. The next one, which is might be my personal favorite to my heart, is the green tide detachment. Yeah. So what it looks like, supposedly, is boys are going to get an innate five up infold, which is insane because we already know boys are oddly durable as they are, oddly punchy in some matchups. So therefore, having them with the five up infold, you're running fat OC everywhere. You got the beast snagger boys in there that are going to have a built-in five up invul and a six up feel no pain you can only imagine you get hopefully there's also like a green tide regen strat that i didn't hear about but hey you know i'm just assuming there'll be one in there if there's a green tide one but if they have a five up invul i might be able to live without it right so right. you don't want it to be op and then gw's mad makes it a six up invul or something <clears throat> the stratagem though yeah this one's pretty juicy uh adding 
the the round number to your charge roll yeah i'm feeling like turn three is going to look a lot more keen sometimes i yes. mean but even a even a two you know but then again in our current detachment we have here we go but this can hopefully count mm -hmm. towards something other than infantry but it is a green tide list so it's really hard to say like you we said these are leaks possible leaks so we can't really fully extrapolate on them but we could get talking we can get interested right but something that i i already have painted up ready to go is the dread mob yeah so all mech and walkers gain access to an ability tree with six different options in exchange for their guns turning to hazardous <laughs> high risk high reward baby yeah. right you're like Supposedly, one of those could be lethals. I like that. Mm, lethals, maybe sustain. Sustain hits. That way, if you're an orc player, you know, we used to have back in the day, sustain sixes, what was equivalent to sustain sixes in eighth edition. You know, there's a way that you could bring it back from mechs so that, hey, I only hit you three times, but in reality, I hit you more than three times. It'd be better if it was double sustain. Um, maybe that's OP, but if it's only for walkers, you're not going to have ridiculous right. volume anyway sometimes so who knows and six options is a lot to be honest it is so we'll see how that goes yeah I, I would like to see that but we'll you know we can just guess and hope and assume what i'm really happy about this is the fact that we got any type of orc leaks means that is our codex really on the horizon is it on the cusp right are we coming along over the hill all right so and then I heard we're going to have a Speed Freaks attachment. Of course, love my Speed Freaks. My Speed Freak army is probably the best painted part of my collection, to be honest. So any reason I can get that on the table will make me feel good about myself. <clears throat> and then a Beast Nagger attachment. I mean, what is that really going to look like, though? Yeah, I'm not sure. But for the Speed Freaks, I'd definitely like to see some up and downy or teleport shenanigans. For Speed Freaks? I would really oh. like it for at least um, reactionary moves, right? Or reaction Someone gets within range of you. You need to be able to move away. Um, one thing I always said is, for some reason, I, I just have a feeling in my heart that Speed Freaks should be given plus one to hit in the Speed Freaks attachment, like the buggies, because they hit on fours. That makes it so you're not stuck to just shooting everything, because they do have somewhat interesting melee profiles, decent strength thresholds, always multi-damage, low amount of attacks. So giving Speed Freaks maybe plus one to hit would be awesome, um, or some type of invul. Yeah, some durability is what I was about to say. That'd be nice. I mean, look, you know, you play Space Wolves. What if you got similar rules to Space Wolves? I get to call stealth, or so I get to reactionary move. Right. I get to do all these different things, come in from reserve at a different time because I'm a speed freak. So come that'd really. be interesting, right? As for Beast Nagger detachment, I mean, what could you really do? Um, because Beast Naggers are already super strong in right. our in our you know index as it is. I mean, mm -hmm. giving them an invuln, they used to have a transhuman um like similar to a transhuman at least we don't have any more if you don't know what transhuman is it's where everybody had to wound you on a four or greater only so no one could wound you on twos or threes i don't think they're bringing back that back because gw's kind of avoided that for the most part this edition but would they give us their ability increase Ooh, mm. what about um squig hog boys going through walls going through walls squig hog boys right yeah, i just want to know, know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what else can you do i mean i mean what are the other squig like, models anyways make, right I mean, yeah, you're talking about your beast snag boys, squig hog boys, their characters. <laughs> Where are they going to give gargantuan squig off and squig off the keyword? But they're in the armor compendium, so they never really update that. So it is weird. I this is this is the one part of the leak that I'm taking with the grain of salt. Also, all of it should be taken with the grain of salt. But a beast snag detachment, I I don't know. I always said that I I. Don't even know why GW introduced these Naga boys to a certain extent because they should just made Ard boys. Because what the heck is a Beast Naga boy as a battle line? It's confusing. And for reasons like this, we have a Beast Naga detachment. What do you even do with that? So right. I, I'm just overall take this with a grain of salt. It's still very exciting. It gives me encouragement that the Orc Codex is around the corner. I was being pessimistic and saying, what if GW just do it at May at us? But now I'm starting to feel that in April, mid April, we're going to at least hear an official thing because you know that when GW knows the leaks are falling out through the cracks, they just like to jump on it right away and kind of try to beat all the leaks to the punch. They don't like right. to leave the leaks out there sulking and then take away all their uh, shine or steal their thunder, right? So if I even hear a little bit of leaks, it means that I have good inclination that GW is going to announce it for that reason, just because they don't want you to steal their thunder. Yeah, it's, it's a good sign because it was starting to get a little concerning that they are teasing... <laughs> Tau skipped us. They were teasing <laughs> Chaos Space Marines. There were already rumors of Blood Angel models coming out. It's like, geez, oh what happened to Oryx? We were supposed to come out in winter. Mm -hmm. That's over now. Like, and a lot of people were freaking out. Like, 
what? Uh, CSM has six detachments. It looks like we're going to have six detachments too. That's actually a part of the leaks as well. I didn't write on here too, but we should have six detachments. We didn't hear what the last one was. So it might be blood axes. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, you know, everybody's always talking about orcs are brutal. Orcs are this and we're crazy and we're savage and we're hilarious and we like red. All these different things. But they forget that we're cunning. And there is a certain amount of orcs that are cunning. And I think right. us cunning orc players would literally like to see that. But also I want to get a shout out to Ecop Force 5. Wall Texas gifted membership. If I see any of you Umis in chats, I'm gonna start knocking your teeth out because there's 55 right, memberships grabs. given out. Besides you, Dagger, you you can never accept them because you're in Australia, I guess, or something, right? Well, yeah, yeah, as far as that six detachment, though, we've seen them just transfer over the existing detachment oh, to true. the codex. True, so true. Don't be feeling my don't be I'm talking sorry, about feeling my thunder. <laughs> Look at what is he doing? I just I don't want I'm, blood. I'm just trying to like, bring you back to reality <sighs> so you don't get hurt. Like, but, don't yeah, hurt. but what is your you can't not have blood axes in a work in a I know axe. it's weird. Guys in chat, let me know what you guys think because I can't be the only one here that's really like, hey, I need a I need a, a blood axe attachment. Well, you can't have all mork, you know, and no cork. Right. I mean that's how I feel. Could they possibly turn the beast nagas into blood axe blood axe play style? And give them those type of infiltration shenanigans and oh that's not a terrible idea I mean, um i don't know how that goes with beast snagging because usually they're like mounted on squigs kind of coming in from far away you can see them so <laughs> what about some scout moves for them uh, infiltration scout moves kind of like yeah. the canoptic court has the enhancement at least for infiltration i can see that yeah that'd be cool that'd you be know, a weird way to blend some some gork into our mork you know there you go or gork into possibly mork actually mork is cunning gork is brutal so you know, um, and then I see a lot of people in chat asking where are these leaks from, where did I hear these whispers in the wall? Um, you know, Discord's everywhere, Warhammer is a big community. So for the most part, we have heard from our little grot, our little kind of grots that have been sneaking around, picking up the scraps that they heard it in a couple different discords and such from um play testers, and they're not willing to give too much more info because they don't want to be outed and such. So like I said, take it all the grain of salt. What I'm really thinking, like I said, the best part of this leak is that even if it's, this is only 50% true, the whole point is that once leaks start coming out, the actual codex starts getting announced soon yes. after because it puts pressure on GW, right? That's well, that's what we've seen too with the Tau rules. Mm -hmm. um, some, I think the Dark Angels rules also apply to that where they originate from a Discord server and mm -hmm. people weren't sure, like, are these rules true or are they not? And it did lead to some rules actually being real. And the source that I heard this from um, said that it was the same person who mentioned Tau, and they were right about Tau and the other factions that were released too. So whether it's exact what the rules are, his leaks are actually a true source of leaks. And like I said, I'm just excited because if you start leaking it, GW is going to start reacting to it. So take this as I don't believe any of you guys. You guys are ugly gits. I don't care. <laughs> Just be excited that the book's going to be released. That's what we care about because a lot of people are getting worried and starting to make jokes in Discord or anywhere you go like the orcs, <laughs> the orc codex is falling off a cargo ship. Like that was the best one. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, thanks, dude. So I see some people saying here they don't know how to not be a Humi anymore. They don't know how to collect the membership. Did we figure that out? Oh, uh, yeah. So it's going to be a setting in your YouTube account on, on in the chat that allows you to accept memberships and if you still can't accept them then you have to go into your advanced settings in your youtube account and take you you have to turn off i forgot what the phrase was um the business uh, account yeah or? like a branded account mm -hmm. you had to turn that off and make it your main account and then you'll be able to accept these uh gifted memberships yeah for sure also, some of you guys are already getting started and what you guys are thinking and everything. So keep it going because we're definitely reading the chats and we're going to respond to all that, especially when we start going to the community pictures or the Golden Demon pictures. We'll pick up on chats to keep this conversation going. So we're not done talking about the leaks. I'm definitely going to interact with all you guys are saying. But, you know, we just got to keep it because we got guys like Lucas here. Yes, blood axes are important, but other leaks say no detachment for them. Oh, no, dude. Why are people trying to pop my bubble already, dude? <laughs> Man, man, you guys, I mean, you're being realistic. I get it, but I don't need realistic because I just need to believe so I can achieve and it can be real. And bad daggers is saying we need a bad, um, a bad moon style that's detachment for shooting. Too. You know, I that's why I was like, maybe the dread wall will be a little, the mech walker detachment might be a little interesting where they give us a bunch of shooting options and it's not right. limited to just walkers. Maybe all vehicles can get them. They compromise there, but 
Yeah, th this is just a snippet of what these detachments could be. So we could see some of those ideas be integrated into these other detachments. I like this one. An additional AP or an eight one hit plus one to hit for B snagger units. They do need an okay. additional AP. If you're, if you're gonna run a whole B snagger unit or army, you know, and there's a whole detachment and you're stuck on minus one AP, you're just gonna get run over by like gray knights or custom. You know, mostly I'm thinking gray knights because they have armor of contempt. But I mean, there's a bunch of armies that have armor of contempt all over the place. So, mm -hmm. and just great armor saves. So you can't really not have only one AP throughout the whole list necessarily. Yeah. And we got some tough mm -hmm. matchups that like to run two up save model, yeah. uh, units and they also have armor of contempt, like Volton. Yeah, for sure, dude. Oh, and then we have five gifted oh. wall tactic memberships from John Anto. Let's go. Speaking of John Anto, great job at Adepticon. We did an interview with him where he'll actually break down his off-meta list, and this will be released on Monday, I believe. Yes. So he'll give you guys some insight as to how that even happened. I really like it because it was a very humble, um, unique perspective on what he took for how he came up with the list, and he didn't even go on there being arrogant. He just said, this is what I'm going to do, and, you know, he got what he wanted. So thank you, John. I know that was very generous of you and everything. And any of you guys coming in right now for the Codex least, yes, we'll show you again. These are some of the leaks that are going on. Five up in Vone, possible for the green tide list. You get a strat for current battle round, add to the charge roll. You get two turns of wall. There's a knob slash war boss detachment. Possible dread wall walker detachment where you get six possible options for your weapon tree, and then you get to pick them, which that would be interesting for melee too. Just saying, right. just, I just thought about right. So, mm -hmm. and then, but you exchange that for lethals, so you can just go like, oh, and blow yourself up, you know. So, peace out, death dreads. Well, this is making me think that because the hazardous is, I think, only tied to shooting, right? Is there examples of hazardous being on melee? I don't believe so. I can't think of one off. So, this hand. could be your bad moons slash uh, yes. dread mob detachment. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And yes, we're losing clans, but getting the detachments. Everybody kind of did that, right? For the Space Marines, yes. they, for the most part, within their, you know, their rules, each of their detachments is pretending to be an actual sub faction or chapter, right? So, like, the Iron Storm is actually Iron Hands, the Anvil is Imperial Fist, things like that. So, yeah, you're, we're not going to have them there, but that's why we can call our clans whatever we want because we're all war bosses. We all wall our own ways. So, it's okay. It's just up for creativity. So I like that. Make sure you guys collect those memberships because we're sitting around, what, 60 uh, right now that people yeah, were handed 60 out. 60 up for so grabs. collect those. You get Because yeah. remember, we have the, the raffle that's going on for our 2K uh, celebration, right? So we always like to do raffles and incorporate what you guys do with us back to you because that's what it's all about, right? That's right. So, and just check those settings. And if you have to go into the advanced settings, Make sure your account is not a brand account and yeah. you'll be able to collect that membership. So I think we'll move on. We'll keep talking about it. Keep talking about it in chat because we're going to keep going through it. Right. But I want to start showing you some pictures from the Golden Demons, get a little ideas from Adepticon, and you guys can keep it going and chat with comments about the leaks. Won't stop me. I'll read it. I'll respond to it. I don't mind. Just want to get some better visuals on screen than what we just had because there's a lot of really cool models. And some of you guys, maybe you don't want to scroll Facebook and look for them. I know I personally was never the person to look for Golden Demon pictures on my own necessarily, but if I seen them, I was like, ooh, ah. So, yeah, this is my first time going to Adepticon too. So, being able to observe and just appreciate all these models and all these artists coming now and just, you know, it was breathtaking. There's some really, really cool ones, guys. Trust yeah. me. So, if you're already like, oh, no, leaks, I'm out, <laughs> bear with me. We'll keep talking about leaks, but check this out because some of these people, you know, really deserve the credit because they're probably not even gamers. So, right. you know, love this uh, AOS model. Let me see what you guys got to say about the rules still, though, because I know you guys right. are all worked up with this. And just to be clear, there's a lot of different models here, but of course, we only captured the orcs. Yeah. Because we the best. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, I reached, there was a bunch of really cool models that yeah, I seen, but I was just like, where the orcs though? Where the orcs <laughs> though? You know, and there was a good amount. I really, I really loved it. So, when people talking about they need a bad moons detachment for the DACA. No, yes. for real. I totally get that. We need more DACA. Zip speed. I like this. Codex leads. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they would keep that same energy. He said, I hope Speed Freaks isn't just for... I you read it, dude. I'm right. a horrible reader. I hope Speed Freaks isn't just for buggies unless they completely rewrite those data sheets. Mm. I'm an evil sun's orc, but those data sheets are just bad currently. I would uh, like movement shenanigan options. Okay, okay. Yes, so would I. For the buggies. They, some of them do need to be a bit tame or brought up to speed. Um, I know, like the indirect buggy, right? It, the rucker truck. 
it sometimes it looks decent on paper, but in reality, it still doesn't do necessarily what you want it to do. Shock Germ Dragster does almost nothing other than move. Um, Mega Crack Scrapjet uh, just lost its complete output and stuff like that. So I'm I'm on the same page as you here. They need a little bit of a buff, not too much because we're still going to get paid for our additions, our sins from last edition. But yeah, so whoop, that's how I feel. My entire army is painted as blood axes. I really hope we get the detachment. Um, I feel you, man. That I mean, my orcs are purple. So, I mean, just telling you right there how it is. Here's another one of the dioramas with the Beast Naga Boy, uh, a Beast Boss with Beast Naga Boys mounted on this Dreadnought. So, I appreciate it. Hazardous is our warp ability. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's actually a great point. I like that. Or, John Otto said we need plus one, maybe plus one damage. On those, oh man, we could use oh, that'd be cool. plus one, yeah. So, getting plus one damage that'd be pretty sick. Um, you know, because you can get over some of those abilities because it's not two damage, it's one plus one damage, which means you get to circumnavigate any of those damage reduction abilities and such. So, I really like that. And yes, that's how that works, you guys. And then, Golden Demon, right here, this guy did excellent. So, mind you, some of our pictures, you know, we don't have amazing uh pictures on everything because we don't have amazing cameras yet. But we did best we could. We took a bunch of pictures, and the best ones were the ones I selected. So yeah. Oh, and the clip. Shout out to the clip. We got the one of the few people we got to meet. Oh, let's go. There's about half a dozen of you guys you meet. So you know, if you're there and you meet me, I appreciate you. You was great meeting you guys and being involved. You guys are beautiful creatures. He said, uh, "I wish I'm sitting on a cell phone." I don't know what you mean, Adam. Um, but but yes. Oh, taking my stampa to Warhammer World for a game tomorrow. Ooh, Warhammer World seems awesome. Here's. A speaking of cunning and blood axe attachment was good. So here's one of the other golden demon entries. Very different. I like his checkered pattern on the hat. Yeah, that's so detailed, and that's such a small hat to have that steady hand. That's amazing. Yeah, for sure. And I see Marco Beast Nagas or Snake Bites clan. Yeah, that's why Beast Naga Boys as a unit doesn't necessarily make sense. You don't see like Ludas being called Bad Moon Ludas. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even trying to be rude or anything. It's that if you've played other editions, you know there's such thing as art boys, right? So something I want to... This is just lore talk for a second, right? If you want to know how orcs actually are spawned and born and kind of chain of command or growing level ups, a wild boy or a tribal boy is not a beast and aggro boy necessarily. That is just a firstborn new gen boy. You can see this in some of the orc books where they're knobs that are already established or orcs that are already established are like oh here come the boys the wild boys we got to go beat them up and usually the other orcs beat them up a little bit to get them to subdue and start listening and fall in line with the clan they're a part of so a tribal orc isn't even necessarily any uh beast naga boy anyways right there's just it's just a new spawn he's just looking for a stick and something to hit then it goes to your normal boy who now understands his role in the world and starts getting involved maybe he gets a slugger right and then after they've been done a couple fights but they're not a knob yet. They're a hard boy, which means they're just a hard boy where they have a bunch of scars. They're kind of swole. They're looking kind of big, but they're not as big as a knob yet. Then it goes to a knob and progressively. So that's why Beast Naga Boys kind of felt out of line to me in some ways. Um, I get why GW did it. We did need more battle line. We did need more models, but just it, saying It that. seems like the orc uh, range is getting that Primaris treatment right now. Yes. And I think that's what Beast Nagas are going to act as going in the future as they start introducing oh, yeah. more. They just lack the gear, though. They don't even have power claws. But I get what you're saying, though. Uh, mm -hmm. No, in GW, they might just come out of another unit that has power claws just so they can sell more models. Like. Yeah, for sure. And here's another picture. Switched it to the mega knobs that were on a little diorama, too. Love bright orcs. Just so you guys know, I'm favored to a couple things. Oh, yeah, Brandon. And they're Scar Boys as well, right? Mm -hmm. Scar Boys, Art Boys, Scar Boys, and the knobs. But this Mega Knobs, I'm really into yellow orcs and bright skin. The reason for that is because on the table, you look like a green tide. You're like a big, huge presence. Presence, it feels really good. And he said, hi, missed it. Where did you find the leaks? In our Discord, you can actually see some of the leaks. But they're, along, they're among other orc channel Discord, so you don't have to necessarily just come to us for that. But it was from a reliable source for the most part. Doesn't mean everything is 100% true. It just means that leaks are starting to come out which means gw is going to start getting pressured to show us the actual rules yes that's really what i'm trying to point out here so really really cool really good up about that yeah thanks adam bat is knob commander i know dude i love the knob the knob in the commando unit the look awesome anyways he said this snick rot's decent yeah snick rot's cool descendant so, 
Oh, Descendant. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> it's Descendant. So that's what I'm talking about. Mega Nobs. So if you guys see one of these that looks awesome, give it a shout out because the person might end up seeing that you guys did it and or, or you might end up seeing this because there's a lot of really good picks. This was an interesting one because it was one of my favorite ones, yeah. <laughs> Anything with the grats, I don't know. It just adds like some a little bit more humor to it. This is making me think it's a, a snaggy little tooth because he has a kind of pole arm. Oh, so he right. might be the name character and someone made it into it because he has a gun and he has some grots with him that are a part of a fight. So I think that might be the version of snaggy, even though it's not necessarily exactly a runt um, stick, but it's similar, right? So, yeah, good, but I think that's call. freaking awesome. The fact that he even went and did this, right? It just means he's up to date on the lore. He likes it. He put a little checker pattern on the pistols. He gave them their own little looks. And then he gave that a really nice, it's interesting that he went for yellow on snaggy, but I mean, technically, right now he is an Uftox clan so he it would make sense that he's wearing a little bit of yellow you know and he thinks he's a, a boss so that's what i'm talking about and thanks channel pony best orc entry at gd that's on how channel pony and you didn't come up to us i'm gonna find you one day okay <laughs> another entry from the golden demon this is getting more to what people like the grim dark edge highlighting pattern what i like is he made that skull from that aos model look like a tyranid's call instead he put, I don't know how he put those, maybe green stuff, maybe bits, whatever. But he put kind of scales on top of that Beast Boss model and gave him a, uh, sorry, not Beast Boss, sorry, this AOS model and just made it look like a Tyranid Skull. So I really, really like that. Just like I like the Orc leaks. Because I'm telling you, boys, what I really want is for GW to come out and just tell us now. So that puts pressure on him and makes me feel really good. Makes me feel like we about to get stuck in, lads. Yeah, I'm going to start anticipating some news now these coming weeks. Just waiting for mm -hmm. Warhammer Community article to pop up. For sure. And we're going to try to jump on that. So if any more leaks come out, we'll start showing them more. We'll talk about it more on stream. We do these quite often. Or join our Discord and start going in there. I do respond. I do talk. I do interact constantly. So if I don't hit you, reply to you, it just means you didn't add me. That's all it really means. So another model right here. This was actually a special edition model. I was interested that he put this in here. And he gave it that olive green color. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you guys do the olive green color. You know, but, um, you know, the it's different than my coloring of orcs. I tend to go for like a bright green. So the olive green is one thing. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Really, really cool looking. Let me see if you guys got anything else to say from the discord. He said, um, he said, how about grim dark orcs? So, yeah, that's uh, OK. OK. Grim dark orcs. Mm, as in, do I like painting them or do I like? how they look i definitely love how they look somebody like billion dollar clown farm he has really good looking grim dark orcs that metallic kind of gunmetal look really freaking awesome he's awesome but he's yeah. way better painter than i'm him. a little surprised well i don't know for sure if he entered anything in this Are you, do you know? no he didn't but because he was there orc bud did so yeah, we're gonna orc cover butt. orc bud i don't know if you guys know orc bud but shout out to orc bud we've seen him also we ran into morty and glory shout out to morty and glory um brad chester a couple other content creators we see in there i did see uh tyler you know we we yeah. it just we kept passing each other like at one point literally as we're leaving <laughs> he's going up an escalator and i'm coming down an escalator and i'm like do i just reach over and touch him no i'm just kidding but that's <laughs> you know i don't want to be like that so i didn't say anything to him yeah it was, it was mm -hmm. such a small window to try he, to say something and he's with this team he was talking to other people obviously he's popular so you know it was just and i don't think he knows who we are so i didn't feel like bothering him necessarily this guy looks freaking awesome though check out this beast yeah. boss on squigasaur hey, those All glowing right. eyes they just scream at me i would have never thought of something like this and i don't think i've actually seen something very similar to this the contrast between every the armor color he chose and for the pants very very nice yet it doesn't contrast to the squig but it kind of blends with the squig right right just a little bit then he gave it an orange slob super unique <laughs> weird green teal teeth which are also like his armor so it gives you the idea that the teeth are actually metal right and then he keeps his chopper looking like a rusted out you know piece of metal scrap for the most part so i think just his thought process through this very very cool very very good also if you're new to the chat uh, the live stream feel free to just ask in about the leak some more we'll always refer back to that and keep reiterating it's not a big deal so just so you can keep guys up to date but we did cover it and we did show a slide for it and Wicked Joe said, I met Orc Butt and the Big Boss. Awesome yeah. people there. Yeah, the Big Boss, uh, that's quote unquote John 
Anto, who ended up getting eighth overall at Adepticon with a totally off meta list. He used no squig hog boys, no knobs with power claws, and no flash gifts. Right. Boom. He didn't even care. Yeah, when we first met him, me and Eddie are just kind of walking by. Oh. And all of a sudden I hear, what's up, nerds? <laughs> and I'm like, there's a lot of us. Man. Who, who are you talking to? <laughs> and I've met John in person already. So I knew he was talking to us. So I look right. I'm like, hey. And then David <laughs> is just like, confused, David's like, next to me, like looking around like, like just oh, call me a nerd. No, a whole convention of us. Who are you talking to? <laughs> it's too many of us. So shout out to this. Whoever part painted this, you're awesome. You get. But also talking about awesome. Sick. Pain boss. Pain boss. I don't think I've ever seen one painted as even close to this good in detail. He's not that popular of a model right now for the most part, but mm. I think he sucks. Sick. He has his very green grab his little helper right there. Just like untappable blue set. I also go bright blue or green. So yeah, I do. I me too. I love it. I think it looks great. Yeah, I'm curious what type of painting technique he used on the banner there because it almost looks like a cloudy blend. I don't I think he just handed that and watered down some paint and hmm, or different. maybe add some white. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I like that a lot. The white face is with metal, like the metallic face, but not looking too fake metallic was actually pretty awesome. So yeah. And as a Depticon for it itself, very long. I've been there before, but I never went there um to Usually, I like on like the Sunday. Like I was, I never try to be involved in everything before. You know, I'm very much. Uh, David and I both are very much kind of low key individuals. We're, we're we never even used social media before for the most yeah. part. We don't have we didn't have our own, so it was like we didn't look we didn't necessarily love and run towards big crowds. So the fact that we're even doing the channel is just because we really out of passion. It wasn't because we really love to be seen necessarily. But this guy loved to be seen with this blue knob. Okay, that's an excellent blue, and that's an excellent skin. That's yes. how I like the skin that I I can't paint anything close to that. But that's how I like my skin, like that. Green with the highlight muscle definition on his forearm, still very good. The blue is excellent. I don't even know how to talk, dude. Dang. So I went, when I put these together, I obviously looked at them, and when we took the pictures, but when it's right here in my face, I really get into it. Really, really nice. As for Adepticon, huge. There was a swap meet there. There was vendors there all over the place. Um, we did try to do a live stream, but our quality was poop. So we, <laughs> so that didn't go. But if you did check it out, that was cool. You know, me and Brad Chester got side by side and we released a giant wah and in, in the middle of everybody playing. So, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and then they turned around. And it was like, hey, what up, dude? So that yeah. was. Yeah, there was a lot of people there. Uh, we met Joe from War Games Live. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. He was doing his thing out there. Okay, it was. So as for going, I recommend you guys definitely try to go. And what we decided is we're going to try to set up teams. So yeah. we're just announcing it now to all 40 plus 50 of you guys. If you're interested in Adepticon, but you're don't go alone and you don't know what to do and you can't go to champs because it's on a Thursday, da, da, da. The teams are on the weekend. We're going to probably set up a team for me and David if there's enough of us. And then we'll just get... As many of you guys stuck in, if we have to, we'll make a third team. I don't even care. We'll just call it wall tactics. Everybody will have fun. Doesn't even mean you have to bring just orcs. You know, if you're just a fan, maybe your orc army's not done. It's cool. Just, you know, it's all good. Just we want people to be involved. We preach that it's not necessarily about being competitive. It's about being competent. It's about being involved and enjoying all aspects of the hobby from the painting to the involved in the tournaments for the most part because you get to see more people that's the thing that people forget about tournaments they're so worried about winning and positioning and whatever what it really means is you're going to meet a bunch of new people you're going to see a bunch of different armies and you're going to have a whole new perspective on the game as soon as you start attending attending events for the most part everybody's very lovely very sweet you know we several of the guys that were in the top uh 16 were people that we knew um and most of those guys are very lovely individuals very nice guys very helpful, all that thing. Very considerate. So yeah, don't be no, worried. One pleasant surprise from seeing the tables at Adepticon oh. is they upgraded their terrain yeah. to GW format. Very nice. Like they had a real bad reputation of having what you call a bowling alley uh, terrain set, yep. meaning just a big wide open middle, mm -hmm. fa heavily favored shooting armies. Mm -hmm. And now that they upgraded, that's why me and Eddie are so excited to try to do teams next year with some of you gets yeah for sure but it's funny because it was known as a bowling lane old alley kind of a terrain and they're like look we have good terrain now and then tau won <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the tau player because right. he was on uh 
Death or Glory, the channel, you know, shout out to Red Chester, and he did an interview with him and that was a towel guy. So that list is now dead in the next codex. When the codex is released, you can't run those ion blasters, but hey, you know, we'll see what they do now. Still looks like a strong book. Yeah. Here is this war boss with another excellent blue. I don't think it's the same git, but he had a similar idea. So the war boss is awesome. And let's we'll see, Adam. Y'all need to come to Grand Narrative and help me represent orcs. I don't know where that is, but remember, join Discord to hit me up. We'll see what it is. You know, we're limited right now because we're still a relatively small channel to traveling. You know, and our area is very healthy for games and events. You know, Adepticon was about 30 minutes, 20 minutes away from us. That's why it was so easy for us to go. <clears throat> and I've gone to other events within two hours of me. But further, further travel, you know, that's a big investment. We're new, but we're open to it next year, you know. So um, I'm, I appreciate the invite. And definitely hit me up if you think it's not, you know, if it's within any reason. Or you just let me know how it is. I like to hear about all the events. And I like to hear about this pain boss. Or pain boy, sorry, pain boy. Pain boy. This pain boy looking beautiful. Another beautiful version of green that I greatly appreciate. And that metallic color. I know it comes off as simple. Let's say you're new to the hobby and whatever. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's actually harder to pull off than you would expect to get it that 3D kind of look um, while still being metal. I do like, though, when it looks a little bit more rustic. Right. right? Like that other beast boss I've seen. Not that I'm, who am I to judge a golden demon entry regardless. I'm just saying that I know that I appreciate a little bit of rustic on my weapons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like how this this color he chose for the blood too. Like Yeah, has... it doesn't look artificially fake like the one coming off the syringe, that dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that too. And, and at the end of his weapons and inside of each of this little prong fingers where he has the vials. That looks awesome. Um so yeah, I'm just it, there are so many orc models. People were just and every kind of version too. That's why I really liked. And wait till we get to like the dioramas and little setups. It gets beautiful. Oh, it's in Atlanta, a little far, you know. But I used to live in Florida, so I definitely know what's going on. Um, and I know Wicked Joe, dude. Give shout out to Wicked Joe because he might end up over there. He goes to Texas. He goes <laughs> everywhere, dude. So yeah, we also met him out like, for the second time again, at Adepticon. Yup, yeah, and we handed out shirts. So if you've seen us there, we tried to give you shirts until we ran out of them. I think we ran out before we gave it to the clip, you know, but we were hand out shirts and stickers and get stuff, you know, involved with you guys. So anybody who said what's up, I appreciate it. And the guys who came up to me, you know, identify yourselves so I can say <laughs> thanks. But that was cool to meet any of you guys that came up to me, right? Here's one of my favorite gets, Snick Rock. I still have the old Snick Rock. So maybe you guys can say, do you like the old Snick Rot or do you like this Snick Rot better as in the model? Right. But I, I still like my old Snick Rot a lot. So that's me. Um, this one, though, is still very done. I'm happy they did it, but we're going to have more when we go through the Q&A about questions of things I have to say about or characters and what's happening with our line. So I'm definitely going to go into that, too, because we have a good Q&A going on after this, after some of these pictures. And we're going to answer like how many questions, like 10, 50, some more yeah, plus that the community asked us. So we're going to get and answer those questions best we can narratively or uh, literally. But shout out to the Snicky Rot. Oh, old Assault on Black Reach War Boss. That's what this is right here. So if you guys are like, ooh, this, what's this? This is an old War Boss from the Assault on Black Reach box. Um, I have one of these and I have several of the, the current War Bosses. So very cool. I like it. As you can see in the background, though, there's even more stuff. So you know more more things more more models everywhere yeah, there's from only types. a fraction of the models of course because we only captured orcs yeah if you ever if you ever uh gone to haven't gone to adepticon it's just a bunch of really big glass casings and like a in like a rectangular form and then people line up and go around it and for some of those days the line oh yeah. was almost across the whole second floor Really, really cool. It was like you were waiting for like a Six Flags uh, yeah. amusement ride. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think they could maybe, I don't, know, I don't know how they could regulate the speed of moving around faster, but it's kind of nice. People are very nice. They'll move for you and everything. So right. if you ever see the line, don't be just scared to get in anyways. Shout out to Alan. Hello, all. First time watching live. First time oh, seeing you. What's up, dude? Man. I appreciate it. All you new guys. And Alan, collect a gifted membership because Wicked Joe hooked everybody up. So did Ecop. So did John Anto. So. You guys get in there. Thank you very much. Very generous. Get it because we have the raffle going on. So we're 2K raffle. So congratulations to anybody who does win. And I appreciate all you guys that stuck in. Speaking of Snick Rot. Snick Rot is a very popular model in this mm -hmm. contest. And this yes. is a theme. If you guys didn't understand why this guy looks like that, it's because there is different categories for every entry. Yeah. So there's like, you'll see, we'll get to a super 
awesome Stampa conversion that's on here is very close to getting to it you're gonna see and that's why there was things in category so like a big thing there's like a diorama one which we have a very cool diorama one snake route was yeah it was snake route was actually very common so yeah this one was just different i forgot what this was classified as but this was its own kind of category too um i think it's cool because this pose and kind of painting suits snake rot to be kind of being unveiled this is how i look when i'm unveiled too you know what i'm saying <laughs> but yeah here is this is orc butt, orc butt so orc butt shout out he's on instagram if you don't know who he is he paints awesome he's a really cool guy very nice to talk to we gave him a shirt too and he took it very sweet of him thank you uh buddy we love it and this is his old Gazgul conversion. This so this was the older version of Gazgul, if you didn't know, um, before he got his new upgrade where he looks like a little dreadnought. And he converted him with other bits of mega knobs and other things. Look at that little snotling on his shoulder. No, a little, <laughs> little thing. And then the mushrooms coming out of the ground. So I really like how he did this. And he gave his own twist. This looks like something he painted. If you haven't seen this gargantuan squig off, check it out. It looks beautiful. And yeah, like we could that he was able to snag OG Badruck oh, and right. Doc uh, Grotznik because at the Adepticon they had like a they had not only a swap meet but they had a vendor there that has a bunch of bits on display and you can sell stuff back to him so that was really cool so even if you're not going to play or do anything show up near Adepticon have fun yeah shout out to the clip because the clip traveled further just to show up and get stuck in and talk to us and meet us and look around he picked some couple things up we took pictures we talked to people but everything was good so it was really awesome yeah he picked up some books and mm -hmm. they have an official gw store there oh, yeah. too good shout out so there. you can get your collect box or your books that you're looking for or any mm -hmm. gw gear there that they offer yes they did yes they did and they had a bunch of different games too yeah uh, have you done that interview with John Anto talking about his run in the top 16 this year? Yes, yes sir. Indeed. So we recorded that and it will be released on Monday. Yeah. So it'll be cool. We showed his list. He gave his insight. We had some questions for him. And then from there, um, he gave us his own anecdotes and how he felt. He gave us moments that were in the game and he just talked about his mindset. That I thought it was a very humbling thing because he didn't go in there like, I knew I was awesome. I had to practice 47 <laughs> games. He didn't anything like that. He was just real, straight up, very relatable, very human of him. So thank you very much, John Anto. It was very, I appreciated the talk. It was fun. And uh, I think it'll be insightful, especially to newer people, to understand that you don't have to go in there and be God's here, most confident person to end up performing well. You just have to be confident in your skill as in knowing the missions and what orcs are supposed to do in your faction. As for the list itself, sometimes you're just like, hey, I'm going to see what happens. I want to run this. We're going to run it. And that's what happened with him. So thanks, Daniel. Because, yeah, we definitely recorded that. I had fun doing it. Shout out to John Otto. And then we have WAP with mem a four-month membership. Uh, let's go, oh. dude. I love these, man. Jeez. I get so excited when I see these because it means that you've been around for a hot minute. If you've been a member and you haven't tried us on a Super Chat because you're just happy being a member, it's okay if you click the Super Chat button. You get complimentary when you reach different thresholds. So as you get promoted through your badge number, so first you'll start off as a runt, and then you become a squig, and you become a boy. But every time you start moving up, you get a different version. Of, you get to throw a complimentary you know, shout out, which is yeah. great because we get to give you recognition for still being around, and you get to yell at us. So fantastic. Hobby challenge, kit bass, wall tactics, war boss logo. Ooh, that's a good Ooh, idea. Oh, dang. Okay. Shout out to Nick. You're going to be doing that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. 3D print or kit bash? Who's keen? Um, Aaron's keen. He Aaron, it's funny because Aaron made a model of me flexing, which is a joke. Now it's a meme in our Discord of me flexing. So like um he he actually made a model of me flexing. And I think he put a headband Hilarious. on it. So God, I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. But yeah, it was very cool. And shout out to this model because I have my version too. He doesn't look as good, I guess, because this is a golden demon, but I really like this model. I either run him as a runt herder because he has a little belly sticking out, or I run him as like a knob you know whatever i need that day so i like it like it like it another snick rock because like david said snick rock was super i think snick rock was the most common yes, model of work that i've seen painted there so that just shows how cool snick rot is and why i would be frustrated we don't have a blood blood a blood axe attachment right yeah what do you do with him i where mean does, he, where does he go he just floats around just being angry at everything i guess like he is in the <laughs> actual code in the actual codex right he said i just got here we get looted tanks. Please tell me we're getting looted tanks. And then, um, no, I didn't. I didn't hear about that. Uh, and you know, I've heard that a couple times. I I just have to say, 
Um, so if you pay attention to how GW has been eliminating things from books and such, they're going for old resin models, but they're specifically going for anything that does not have a model, like official model. And I hate to break it to you, all my beautiful people that put those together and very creative gets. We love you. But most likely those are never coming back unless GW releases their own version of a looted tank, a wagon or tank. So I know maybe you might are just having fun, but I just want to let people know, you know, the mindset of GW is consistent, generally speaking, and at least with eliminating models and such. So right. Easy. That, that may take may take some time till we see something like that. Cause mm -hmm. I'm going to bring back the the comparison to Space Marines where they got rid of a whole bunch of their vehicles and then you started getting these Gladiator tanks coming out. Mm. So maybe Orcs are going to get a similar treatment because they're doing the whole Primaris slash Beast Snagger yeah. thing right now. That's a good point as they're so. trying to upgrade. They're trying to upgrade our collection. There's a chance that something at, during an upgrade happens where we do get some version that we can call Luda Tank and you can use your Luda Tanks. That'd be right. cool. And good it could be in the, in the next edition kind of thing because... Mm -hmm. it's gonna take time for that to happen it's true it's true and shout out to nick rot and this guy who painted it love the muscle definition love the brightness and then he just this kind of realism look where he keeps to the bones the backpack keeps it simple i really like when people do that too so shout out and here is some blood bowl models that are wild looking and i'm sure some <laughs> of you guys have never even seen orc blood bowl models so i'll leave that up for a second for you guys to look at because that's really cool and i think there is something in here monthly kit bass challenge and cool discord would be cool yes and someone else put a, a good suggestion that we should have a lore slash narrative channel. If you guys think we should have that in our Discord, go ahead and say that because it'd be a fun way to collect lore that people actually have or share if you come across a video too. So, and I'd like to actually do a lore story. So we're gonna try yeah. to do that. We try to do that because my creativity is just overflowing because you gets. So and then uh, just real quick for all you new people, we got some memberships that are up for the taking mm -hmm. thanks to some uh, gracious generous, generous gets out there uh, all you got to do is make sure your setting in the chat is on to accept gifts and then if you still can't accept it look at your advanced settings on your youtube membership make sure you're not a brand account and then you can become a member join the great wall join our giveaway that we're doing for chatting uh participating in the live chat or comment after the video yes sir and i'd like if you use your badges that's me you don't have to but you know I get a little excited when I see a oh, or anything like that. Yeah, this is some badges and quite some bit. Yeah, some people use them all the time. Um, and he goes, any predictions on what's going to Legends? I wanted to go over this. We do have Q&A um, that we're going to go after a couple more of these pictures. But yeah, I do have any predictions on what's going to Legends because I've been paying close attention. So we've been paying close attention for a while. And I know McFast, McFatsome, am I reading that right? In my opinion, yeah. we should get a looted tank sprue, kind of like how the Space Marines get chapter focused bits. Okay. So if you just want it for cosmetics, I'm super down with that because we can put that on trucks, oh, sure. we can put that on wagons. That's actually a great alternative suggestion. So shout out to you being cunning, you little smart git. So, and un untapped blue, you you're feeling me, buddy. I'm horrified to losing bad rock. Yeah. Let's go. So those Blood Bowl models look excellent, by the way. They really do. That grot on the right with the crazy looking cone head is freaking <laughs> wild. Wild. So these models are really awesome. If you guys ever need anything to change your uh, war bosses up and such, you should definitely attempt it. And John Otto with the two month membership oh. flex. Let's go. Yeah. He said, I want my tank busters back. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong. Okay. Not only do I want them back, I want new ones because the ones that it's just... I get what they did by making the profiles go with the actual models. It makes total sense. It should happen. I appreciate it for newer people. I know some people don't like it. I'm just saying for newer people, for the entry, remember the skill curve for 40K is already pretty high, guys. It's already kind of hard. So at least let the data sheets and the models go together a little bit, right? right. That being said, when they did that with tank busters, now you need to drop them to about 65 points, <laughs> you know, 85, 65 points, or you need to give them correct rules in a new or a new kit that way they can't have weird different like one guy has pissed two two guys have pistols one guy has a hammer and two guys have actual rockets or some iteration of that i have to check my collection real quick but the point is it's like do i stay far away do i get close or do i charge you with this hammer you know right. it, it doesn't go together the rules themselves aren't horrible because you get rerolls. but yeah they they really took a, a doo-doo on tank buses in every way and the fact that they were 135 points showed that they just went right over GW's head. Yeah, that just makes it hard to track for yourself what stats each weapon does. 
then your positioning where you have the models within unit coherency is a factor as well like, mm, it's, yeah, simplify it yeah it makes no sense so and yeah shout out to john Otto for the two month gifted members of uh, flex because if you guys are members remember if you've been around for even a little bit there's a chance you got it there's a chance you got it after you reach certain threshold you usually get them like three months or something yeah. like that or two his is two months but yeah fantastic and then we have yep so and this is one of the other pictures i like his little pedestal for the most part simple but beautiful this model is the, i appreciate it for what he did very nice we went on to an oof talk i'm really glad he got an oof tag out there there weren't a bunch of them but he was pretty um common he wasn't the most common but he was pretty common so mm -hmm. yeah i can't remember was this one part of the young bloods competition or? oh you're right, right? this it one was. was a young blood competition yeah because like we said there was categories of golden demons and such so this was a part of the young blood competition where they were like 13 and below yeah so, so this kid is skilled yeah, it's this, crazy young, talent. this runt is getting off dude he's the extra big runt you know what i'm saying he's the one that has a little bit bigger head than all the other ones he's you know <laughs> he's out here dude so yeah i loved it as soon as i noticed it was an actual kid i was like yo that's why i made david remembers because i remember i was super surprised i was like that looks whoa that looks right. way better well, than anything get i him do. to paint my mom yeah for real they were that kid i do shout out to the kid so yeah and those blood models are so good blood models. yes they are so good thank you joe for using the mega knob emoji badge let's go mega knobs. i'm still mad at tank most mega knobs only have two attacks bro let's go on to the next picture <laughs> yeah so here, here it go. is look at this crazy looking stampa if you're not looking right now take a second look at the screen just take a look at this crazy thing so it, it just point out some of the details one it's on one leg that's terrifying i can't believe this person <laughs> put it on one leg whoa dude he's going for a roundhouse kick yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to kick canis rex in the forehead <laughs> so that's crazy also if you look at his shoulder it's right shoulder that's not another model that's they put a mountain on its shoulder and then they put some trolls throwing rocks at you from it. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That was absurd. And last but certainly not least to point out here, that is a Gazgul Thraka forehead in there. Yeah. That is a Gazgul Thraka forehead put in there. So Gazgul Thraka coming in, looking sick. They took Gaz bits. They took Imperial bits. And then they took some AOS. And then they took a part of someone's diorama and they threw it on here. So I... So, shout out to them that's beautiful do i have two the, pictures of this i don't uh, know there's also a grot hanging off one of the rods off his knee joint you yeah see that? let me see another picture that's, that's really yeah, a little Here closer picture thank you i was like i did have a closer oh you're right there <laughs> there's the grot that's hanging off the side if you look at to the bottom left section of this picture there's the grot there's grots on top manning the weapon and you get a little closer look on the gas face you can see there's a black templar panel right there kind of on above its knee so this person's amazing if you ever see this so you you could deserve multiple shout outs because this was passion this was creativity this would have been my super winner just like and then you is our oh, current winner let's, can we new member? let's go thank you alan thank you for collecting that thank you for everybody who gifted them you guys are beautiful very generous lovely individuals and any of you guys that can't because you haven't fitted up the settings or because you're stuck where you are daggers you know i'm sorry <laughs> to hear that so you know shout out to you guys and this was a beautiful model beautiful kid i'm gonna do the zone out once remember this also has a mountain on its back i don't understand i don't care to understand you know they were just the one, this mountain on its back oh it's a sure. different model oh it is oh uh, different you sure? yeah, oh you're behind it oh i was being dumb so, oh yeah, yeah i see it Wait. Sigma thing. i messed up guys you're right because look right there it says passing tide behind it i can see that <laughs> i can see the diorama this one was so big sorry i'm i'm tripping out tripping out i still like the other one behind it though I'm gonna switch because I'm embarrassed now. All right, so the next one <laughs> oh, is dope. this one is amazing. Shout out to Blake Kilton's shop owner because this is Blake Kilton's shop owner. So we met Blake oh, okay. Kilton at the last mm -hmm. GT, and his shop owner I think is the one who inserted this one. And so you can see this. This is Predator or Prey mm -hmm. Snickerot lined up with a lictor. Dude, this looks like it's straight out of like a movie. Dude, like that's how cinematic and a great job he did to just capture that that um image yeah this makes this is one of those things that's just getting my blood flowing of i want to start coming out with lore um you know i appreciate the big daca i appreciate the books we have out now but you guys know about gav and bob that old uh, story that came out and such we're trying to make some fun unique narrative lore of our own i think that's nothing we're going to want to go to i'm super excited and something like this gets me motivated for that 
yeah. start getting ideas of Snick Rot actually doing something, all the named characters doing some, or because we can't use extra GW named characters, some iteration of similar characteristics, as well as just some completely new, which I got up in here in my big noggin. But this model is amazing. If I could get closer to it, I would. Blake Kilton might actually have more of these in our Facebook and everything if he posts them because he can get close up pictures because they're at his local store. So if right. you're interested in that, give him a shout out, bring something up like that. I'm going to leave it up for a second, see what you guys got to say. The 15 and below crazy painting skills from a young Grot. Yeah, dude. He, I guess we can call him a Grot instead of a Runt because he's looking kind of powerful. He said, I play Crusade, so Legends and Looted are my bread and butter. Let's go. And we did a Legends video, too, because it gets like you. Because it's all about that. Just whatever you guys do. Who Competitive is literally like 20%, 30% of 40K. There's so much more left on the table. And maybe less. And Orc players cover every part of the hobby. So some people, like John Otto, John, we have his pictures on here later, much later in the stream too, but he had a whole display board. My boy was dressed up. He dressed up like old McDonald one day where he was wearing a straw hat with his friend and some overalls yeah. and running around <laughs> playing games like that. So the org community, just because you're an excellent player, a hobbyist, or painist doesn't mean you have to be limited in any way. That's what our faction's actually about. So I, it just gets me excited and really excited. And he goes, Alan says, I wanted to support you guys. I've been watching your videos for about a month now, and I find your contact very nice to watch. Well, thank you. I find it very nice that you joined us. I appreciate the support, um, and I'm glad you're here. All you new gets or anybody else that's here, you know, you guys uh, encourage us and motivate us, and we're glad we can give you any kind of value or entertainment because this is passion and love for us anyways. Speaking of passion and love, what's up with this? Mando yeah. diorama. This one caught my eye so quickly. I really love this one. Now, um, this is just a knob. If you're not, if you're just listening, it's a knob, kind of like in a jungle, but he has this little background. It's very small relative to the other ones, but it was done excellently with that kind of paint job. He's sticking out. He looks so 3D. He looks like he's almost touching you in the face. And around his mouth, having that kind of charred, weird the skin look is kind of crazy. Or daggers can't accept memberships on your phone, only computers. I don't know. I accepted all mine from there, so I don't know what's going on with that. Adam. Can't figure out to take sexting to accept the gifts. Just glad to be here with other gifts. Well, you you know, if you get off, you might still get it anyways. If you just figure it out, you know, there are so many generate like um, generous people today. There's a chance you're all getting it or you guys are getting new ones. So that's awesome. Yeah, I think just by you being here and then if you turn it on later, you could still receive it. I've gotten memberships like that. Watching other people's channels, I tune off and then like 10 minutes later, I got a notification saying I got a sub. Or a gifted membership. Yeah, yeah. So you can still get it, especially if you clock out, clock back in. Um, and shout out to Blake Kilton. Hello, buddy. We actually showed your shop owners. Uh, pick, was it the one right before this? Oh, right there. Yeah, right there. yeah. just because you're, I'll give it a little quick one for you. You can post more pictures in the Facebook. If you can get closer to it and do a nicer one, that would make us happy. But it's funny. We we're just mentioning how your shop owner actually pos posted that. So very cool. Like we said, guys, it's about the community. You never know. We're going to meet. You're going to go there. I appreciate you all wherever you are. Even if you're across the pond, you know, my favorite content creator anyways is Morty and Glory, and he's across the pond. So you guys are always on my mind anyways. Just because you're far doesn't mean you're far from my heart. So here we go. We have the rock, the uh, grok, orc rocka. Dude, this one was awesome. Awesome. Very good looking. Very creative. This looks 3D as well. These last two that we showed, they might have been on the same category or something, but they looked really, really good. So you guys check this one out if you haven't. I wish I actually picked this model up. So if I ever see this model or if you ever see this model or have another one, let me know. I'll buy it from you or whatever it is because I didn't pick this one up. I have the old metal one actually, um, and he stuck to my Morkanot. So maybe I'll show you real quick on screen, but yeah, it's really cool. And uh, I love it. So take a second to check that out. And he said, cornstarch. Hey, I like that, cornstarch. Uh, where are the leaks posted? Haven't seen anything on Reddit, Discord. On our Discord, it's about it. And where the, the person got it from was about it. And he's getting it from a somewhat reliable source that also mentioned the PAL ones, and they were similar as well. Right. So not saying that they're 100% accurate. I'm saying that leaks are coming out, and it's true. Therefore, GW is going to be pressured too. And I really like that you're going to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing two weeks until we hear something from official GW yeah. because this is the first whispers from the warp, you know, and it's going to be about a week. Maybe they're going to fall out a little more and then GW is going to be like, mm, someday on the second week from now. So here guys, we have an announcement of six orcs detachments, right? So, and that's how they sound to me. Right. And, and, and historically leaks are a trend towards more coming. So, yeah. And 
right here and you know john wheat brings up a good point but i still want to encourage he says building up a boom daca snaz wagon but having so much indecision waiting on the codex mm -hmm. you know and that's the thing dude is the codex will dictate what you're actually kind of playing with but your collection and what you're collecting and building up that shouldn't necessarily be dictated off the codex um you never know what's going to get a buff in the middle of an addition right and you don't want to be the guy who goes oh man i have three boxes of boom daca snaz wagons over there and i didn't build any of them because i didn't think this, the speed wall would be good and now it's good and now it's good <laughs> and then you're trying to build it and put it up i always say first of all if you're starting orcs collecting orcs or any army try to collect multiple uh different data sheets don't put all your eggs in one basket unless it's out of pure love and passion which is totally fine but that gives you more options for as you're learning and creating your list and becoming a different player, you can always kind of change and ebb with flow with the tide, the green tide, you know? So if you're discouraged or unsure, just go with what you love. And if you're already working on it, that means it's something you love. So stick to that, finish it, at least get it primed up, maybe base coded and then move on to something else, right? Cause you don't want to also get burnt out either. So um, definitely John, you bring up a green. I think that's a lot of people who should, Think similar, not the same as me, but similarly follow that line of reasoning and it'll help you in your heart and make you not get burnt out as an orc player because that happens when you're new. And shout out to this awesome AOS model that was put together with these, uh, with these, what are these rats called? Skaven with these yeah. Skaven and he's showing them their own head like, what's up? Come get some. I love that. I'm gonna keep that on because it's hyper aggressive. So uh, no givens is saying Stampa still big step in and blast and even without the troll gate detachment yeah yeah you're right thank you thank you for making me feel better about that yes it still looked fantastic even without them um and i just loved it and talking about stampas what's going on with that battle force box huh how dare you guys have that oh, battle man. force box and who actually wants that and is loving that i'd like to hear some of you guys mention something about that a little bit oh and then we have david yeah bren dort mans welcome to the <laughs> great wall sorry i struggled with your name there <laughs> I didn't want to mispronounce it, but I, I did. Yes, sir. Well, welcome to the Great Wall. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I Let's appreciate go. you. That's fantastic. Any of you new people, people who have donated, you guys are beautiful, and thank you very much. It encourages us, and it keeps us going, you know? So, I mean, it really does mean a lot. So, thank you very much. And I see your Great Wall there, buddy. Yeah. So, yeah, Cornstarch, just so you know, yes, that's where it is. It's posted and everything. Check it out. And if you don't believe us, you'll believe us in about two weeks. Wink, wink. Um, and John Otto, I still have four golf rockers. Uh, am I going to pick one up for you like I did the Gorkin out? We might have to set that up if you are willing. So, yeah, very cool. I'm excited about that. This is fantastic, by the way. The whole diorama with the scathing getting wrecked. Just so you know, we're only about we're about halfway through some of the pictures we have. So we got still a lot left to go. Maybe I'll go faster. Maybe I'll keep it up. Let's go. So thank you all you guys being generous again with the mando so you can see this mando doesn't have snick rot doesn't even have the knob these dudes are just jumping out of a bush coming behind enemy lines i like that he brought like kind of purpley slash pink guns it's very cool very different um the skin being an olive cover color i think it suits it, it's almost like a almost like a fleshy color but it's not i'm just gonna say it's olive i really like that as for mandos it kind of makes sense to kind of blend yet when they're in a forest being green is a bit more mean you know what i mean but Great job to their weapons. Um, I like that. You, you want to make their skin too green in this kind of picture because then it wouldn't contrast and it would look weird. Right. So I'm just saying like for practical senses, the green one is why they're so useful in the, in the jungle environment. But for this painting, I understand why they did it and it still looks excellent. Excellent. So he says, um, so jank the tank. I've been having fun rounding out my collection ahead of the codex. Yes, round it out. There you go also collect the membership jank because you've been around for a long time so don't tank it by not collecting a membership he goes uh david you can read that because i'm taking some right, right here all right you want to make it a little larger so you could read from here bam i know i've heard of our current index rules being the golf detachment but i felt like a lot of our enhancements only really pair well with beast snagger units so mm. i wonder if our index detachment is a beast snagger detachment oh okay that was look mm. at you using that did you go big old head you know we met in person so actually i know you do have a big head no i'm just kidding but you <laughs> you know it is true that actually quite a good observation from you um i like that i like that yeah, idea that, that was actually a cunning idea um because right now it's just called like the wall tribe right that's all it's called right now so yeah very very slick very very slick of you to bring that up i appreciate that let's see he goes 
I reckon Kareen is a stratagem that's going to get moved to either speed or stompy detachment. And the mob rule one is going to get reworked. Yo, if they make this the speed wad detachment and then they give you Kareen, but it's not going to four plus. I mean, I'd like if it just went off, right? right. But um, because if you roll for it, it's like a big boost in, in extra detachment. So it make it not competitive. But I know people would still run it and enjoy it. So I don't care that much. The point is I want it to not be just on a six is really thematic and if you have to limit it to you know uh let's say like a buggy anything that does one more to wound that blows up might automatically and then for anything right. bigger you might have to roll for it that'd be a good way to kind of find the medium i don't think gw will do that because they don't seem to understand what the medium is but you know just food for thought and everybody gets happy and you think the mob rule is going to get reworked absolutely our mob rule right now is trash but it's been good in other codexes and stuff like that so um yeah so we we just need to know that that changes because right now it's useless and orcs should not be so weak to uh, battle shock tests and morale tests and they shouldn't be so scary berries once the units destroyed maybe but that's it right and this model looks excellent there's like epic sailed this is excuse me epic scaled yes so oh so that's like two inches Oh, jank the tank, tank, tank got the there message. Go. He didn't tank it Jeez. or jank it. He showed up and became a member. That's what's good. Thank you, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. You know, and me and Jank met in person. So when I call him a big head, we're joking. You know, I mean, he knows. He knows I'm joking, guys. I'm not bullying anybody. He said, "Got no." Oh, he said, "Got me good." Just letting you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he said, "Got me good." I was messing with you. Don't worry. You know that. We know that, buddy. It's all love. Oh, John Wayne makes another point right here. Oh, okay. Six K of orcs ready to rumble. Started with Beast Naga's launch box and ninth and the kill team box. Okay, those are excellent. Probably another 1K ready to build and paint. Most proud of my chrome like tiger wagon and my kill team. Okay, I like that. Big investments, reaching your good points. 6K of wall ready to rumble. That's a good amount. I would say don't go too crazy because then you fall behind in hobbying, but you might be an excellent hobbyist. A hobbyist. Just don't get burned out. Get a well rounded collection, which seems like you did. And then get it based, I would always suggest. That way, if you start moving in that direction, you don't have to start from zero. Right. You know, and you don't get burnt out because people get burnt out when they start from beginning to end on one model and they have to take it all the way. Right. Yes. If you just take it in levels and layers, that helps greatly. That's how I took it because I'm just not a hobbyist. So maybe you guys are like, I just got it. I'm no problem. Okay, machine. <laughs> I'm lean, mean machine. I get it. Shout out to this epic model, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful. And look at this old world model. It is an old world model. David found this one. I didn't even see this one when I went through. So beautiful model. Very, very unique. You're not going to see that. That little ugly runt on top holding that that right. like moon kind of thing. He did a great job painting it, but it also stands out really well. And I really want that as a bit or something or just this, this grot as a whole because that grot looks fantastic. I, I, I think the favorite part of this model is the grot or the axe. Yeah, even the moon. Like mm -hmm. that's sick. It's got like spikes coming out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So, man, these guys are getting all worked up. Let's see what you guys also <laughs> got to say. Mm, he said, I want ramming speed in my mech detachment and do mortals. Okay, uh, do right. But we get tank oh. shock, right? So, yeah, yeah, more. Sure. I mean, you can tank shock. I mean, GW might not listen to us because of that, but it's not a bad idea. It would make us much more reliable and stronger. He says, uh, speaking of building out my orcs in general, I'm bolting up Waz, boom, bomb, blasted jet. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I got four planes, and I got them all built. Um, two of them are fully painted, completely battle ready and based. So, yeah, just build your collection out, guys. It'll feel good. That's how I did with my collection. I started off just, just getting a bunch of a couple different things. Besides boys, I got a bunch of them. I got like 100 boys right off the bat because I knew I was going to be that kind of player. Um, but fill it out because it feels good. Once the book changes and flows, because the thing about it the codex might drop and have ridiculous points and not make sense and then you start moving towards what makes sense and two months later gw changes the points because a data slate drops and they're yeah. like oh that didn't make sense never mind and you just spent those two months collecting towards what they said and then they just give all those things debuffs or downs and such so never chase it in that kind of way especially now this is the best time to kind of just get some paint or anything built up in my opinion right now while we're waiting because even when the leaks come out and such, you already start getting an inclination on where you want to go. And then and moving on to the next model, by the way, these AOS models are sick. I think some of the AOS models, because they have such awesome muscle definition, we're able to get really good uh, highlighting on these muscles and looking right. big. And they're bigger. So I think they did an excellent job right here as well. 
Channel Pony. Channel Pony should have said what's up and hit me up in the DMs. Do I want to meet yeah. Channel Pony? Is literally, guys, I think he was a part of the channel when we had like 50 or less subscribers. Yeah, he was there with like our first week of Yeah, streaming. dude. He was literally leaving like comments when we, he might have been one of our first comments, dude. And I remember I said his name wrong. I was super confused. So yeah, it was fantastic. I'm like, who pony are you for? Like, you know, Chanel pony. Yeah, I was like, Chanel pony, are you for us <laughs> channels? You know, so Channel Pony, shout out to you. Very, very OG of you. But he said, why not both? Stompa in the speed detachment, attach boosters, jet engines, what year cycle? That's <laughs> that's why you were one of our first, right? Uh Tau Codex just has an auto explode strats. If oh, if orcs get one, I'll be so happy. You know, we used to have one and then we abused it with planes. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we did. But yeah, well, you know, well, if, if yeah. Tal got one, I mean, we, should, we probably should get one too, right? Right. I yeah, mean, bring that back. GW's been pretty generous with giving, you know, with the codexes, people are getting similar rules, right? So I hope so. Uh, and then Orcs should get a deadly demise on a four plus. Yeah, at least, right? I would say they can change it. Like if you have a certain amount of wounds, then it's on a four plus. If it's less than that, it's auto. Right, because you you know you could be circumstantial that that truck or that that uh, buggy just moves up or that killer can it's like ha ha and then right. just takes out that last one it would feel really good and you get an actual return on investment for your CP because rolling for it sometimes can lead to feel bad moments as well. Or what if they uh, added that as a second ability for the mech mob as mm -hmm. uh, during the wall? Oh, during the wall you just auto start blowing up. Yeah, oh! yeah that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. If you use Deadly Demise, auto blow up, you know, like, <laughs> that's great. And these models are fantastic. Sorry, I didn't comment on it. I love the blue. I love the skin. These are at least this little diorama of a paint job is probably in my top five so far, personally. Like, imagine a whole army of these. Right. How crazy that yeah. would look. Look fantastic. And these yeah. guys were the, this is the out shot of the first shot that we showed from the picture. This is how look he did really good. I like that little squig in the middle looking super mean um kind of blending in with the rocks you know he looks awesome and these guys looking swole out here with the muscles this yeah, the brightest green i've seen on any models that were there was these right here these as for skin color ratio this was my favorite just saying um you know everyone has a different favorite thing to me because for example the big stampa was my favorite kit bash individual model my favorite diorama was either was probably the snick rot lined up with the lick the lictor so everybody was my favorite in their own way which is why there's categories so i love that and i like you guys all mentioning throwing shooting out their uh their collections of their walls <laughs> i think i'm somewhere in like the 13 to 14 thousand and i'd say like most of it is painted actually right if you look at my shelf over yeah, here is. yeah most of my stuff's painted i have like a preparation for this edition i painted up like 90 boys you know, I was right, and then they're like, "Be snagger boys." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> you know, I don't, know. I don't have enough of those. I yet. got offended. You know, like I was like, "Hold on, dude!" Well, I just beat on my boys, and then they turned the mobs to uh, 20s instead of 30s. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Hey guys!" And then you know, then I learned about the knob with wall banner, and I felt good again. So yeah, John says my hobby to play ratio is like 20 to one, but I do prefer to play. You know, and I get it. We're not all of us are in different areas. Don't always get a chance to do it, but the fact that you're hobbying and getting ready still feels good you're still very much involved in the community and that's why we're here for you too i mean it's not just about comp play dude that's why this channel is about the or community and everything we do in 40k we're rounded well-rounded boys you know unlike gork and mork they're you know opposites so he says 6k he's about adam has about 3.5k okay i mean that's good that's still a good amount dude because you know you just have to have it and especially you get time to paint it up i didn't start off too too crazy you know and then i kind of got crazy so yeah. Oh, yeah, new member. Oh, another new member. Let's go. Oh, Rock Lobster. Rock Lobster with the Goku man riding a crackhead uh, cloud. What is that? From Adventure Time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Lumpy something space princess. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Shout out to Rock Lobster. Yeah. Oh, for collecting that. We're getting in. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, buddy. Very nice of you. And he subbed on both accounts. Oh, Whoa, so let's go. Thanks, y'all, you new gets. If you're new here also, because I see some of you guys are new, we're doing a raffle. If you collect the memberships or you make one, you'll be entered into the raffle as well. And we do them kind of often. So you just got to comment in this live or, or, or in the live after. or even after the yeah. video. Live and after the video to get accepted. Um, And thank you for being here as a whole. We do community streams. We went over the leaks. If you have anything about to say about the leaks or ask, throw it in here. 
I'll be free to talk about that. We have a Q&A after a couple more of these pictures that were submitted by the community as well. So maybe get your answer, your question answered, and then we'll go to our community picture. So let's go. Let's move on to the next picture as well. Oh, this was a uh, this is a closer one of Orc Butt. I shot it out that little runt. Look how sad yeah, he looks in the psycho. At <laughs> look at the eyes of that runt, dude. Can someone else say something about this runt's eyes like, looking like that? He's just looking like, why am I here? Yeah, like, I'm gonna get killed my entire. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Like that's his, that's his look right now, dude. Like I'm gonna die. He's terrified. So let's see what you guys also got to say. I'll leave that up for a little longer, just because the eyes are outrageous on this runt. Then he goes. uh Green tie with the reroll or pay two CP for a whole unit. That used to be a strat in eighth edition. Mm -hmm. So it was like unstoppable green tide or something like that. And as long as you had one model left in your unit, you could bring the whole unit back to life um, as a regen and then bring it in from reserves. So yeah. GW has already experimented with these rules. And I would really like if they brought it back again. Because I mean, come on, dude. We have to have a green tie over the wall. Could you imagine that comboed with the mob detachment? The five up invuls. Let's go. Let's go. I get to bring my 90 boys back. My 90 oh. painted, 100 painted boys back. And here's another diorama picture that we've seen there. Really like this one. If you don't know exactly what's going on, this is a salamander uppercutting an orc. But mind you, this is mutual <laughs> combat because on the left side, we have orcs that are like just posted up. We have runs. They're all chanting. There's a fight, guys. Everybody's getting punched. This is a 40K fight club here. Right here. This is literally 40K <laughs> fight club, guys. They have um, they have guys up here that were Adeptus Mechanicus. They have some weird looking kind of characters that I haven't seen. A bunch of Space Marines. There's even a random like I don't know what is that a towel in there in the front and on his knee. They have a Guardsman. I don't know what that thing is. What's that little sure. beige one? It looks like a towel because he has a hoof foot. So it's hilarious. And then on the left side is all the orcs. So I wanted to get a closer picture of this, but whenever I took other pictures, I got a glare and I didn't do a great job. But this is what it is. Um, I love this. This was very fun. So there's a lot to look at here. So I'll leave it up for a second. America says, we are number one. We're going to be number one again. Yes, we are. Yes, we are, buddy. But you know what? We're always number one. Because orcs are never beaten. And in the far-fetched future where there is only war, orcs are the only ones having fun. So we're already one. And we're already number one. But thank you for that. I appreciate it. And he said, maybe more squig hide tire rules to make the vehicles tougher. Okay, I remember that. It'd, it'd probably be a data sheet ability, right? For any of those. Oh, and then we got America. Ooh, let's, let's go. go. Shout out for the super chat. Let's go, America. He said, Beast Snagger Boys are just primaris orcs. Yeah, there and go. for that reason is why I would have liked for them to be called Ard Boys and or Scar Boys for that reason. Because you name them after a clan, it's kind of like, what? Like, what's going on here? So it's fine. You know, GW was a little weird with the naming, but... As a whole, yes, they are Primaris, and I appreciated it. So there is another rumor that's been going around. Uh, if you check out Chapter Master of Alric, he actually covers this, and he says that he got this from a very reliable source that has predicted um, multiple things in the past, and this is going to be far down the road because this will be for 11th edition, but supposedly the poster army is going to be Space Wolves versus orcs let's go and then they're gonna get a huge model uh, refresh so maybe that's where we start getting these new primaris or be snag model lines and if valric said it it means it's right no i'm just kidding yeah but well, you he's know, usually right we're blaming him anyways <laughs> if it's wrong so let's go yeah, right. go spam his chat I'm also <laughs> what's leaked from the codex so we have uh the possible detachment rule should i just pull it again just oh, for the heck of can... it even well yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say you could do that. Yeah, I'll just pull it up real quick just because there's a lot of new people in here. Here's some of the leaks. There could be more, everything like that, but just for a quick reiteration. Yeah, so we got six po or five possible new detachments here, starting with the knobs attachments, which is gonna give you access to two turns of the wall, which is great because it's kind of one of our problems when we go second, mm -hmm. it's easy to counter. And it's hard to find units that can actually do something outside of the wall turn. So Absolutely. I'm excited for that one. Right. Uh, the Green Tide mob, which is my second favorite one. Boys getting a five up invul. That'd be great. That's me. If you guys want to know the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the Green Tide detachment. <laughs> just, that's just me, guys. I'm ready to go. Yeah. The boys mobs are back. And then uh, there's a stratagem that for the current round number, you add that to your charge roll. So that'd be great for... Uh, mid game to late game charges just kind of guarantee that you get in there and get an objective uh, we got the dread mob detachment where mechs and walkers gain access to an ability tree of six different options 
one oh well it's also going to be an exchange for hazardous on their weapons mm -hmm. and one of the abilities being gaining lethals so we can extrapolate from there that it's probably going to be something like sustain um uh, maybe some extra movement or uh dev wounds something along those lines Ooh, let's go and then you're gonna blow yourself up that makes it even better <laughs> <laughs> right and then uh not many details about this but we're gonna get a speed freaks detachment and a beast snag a detachment possibly i'm not sure about that last one necessarily uh someone brought up a good point that beast snag detachment might just be what we already have as a wall tribe detachment reiterated or that's what the sixth one is so just keep that in the back of your head i thought it was good food for thought and yeah so i brought that back up so thank you for shouting that out because there was a lot of new gets so i just wanted to let you guys get a new pin point in. and here's a new pick from still still adepticon still golden demon some these are speaking of tribe these are some old tribal aos models yeah. let's go the one in the middle to the claws looks pretty awesome i don't think i've ever seen an orc with a bow and arrow so that's kind of dope to see oh yeah david hasn't really ever looked at aos for the most part no, no. Uh, i do have a um ogre army the snow ones the ones that are scared of the snow and they're fully painted i bought them like that i don't paint them but they look so sick and they were like a really nice collection so i got them just in case i ever dabble so oop, he says I was talking to my son about giving orcs an auto explode while taking him to school today. That's an awesome <laughs> conversation to have with your son. I appreciate that. That's very cool. And they should have an auto explode. We're super yes. down for that. He said, I have 21 crusade games on my orcs in ninth and 10th and about four in regular one, two games. Epic moments with my Gar Gorkan Gorkanaut last standing. Did not I like that. Gorkanaut blowing up. <laughs> Everybody loves blowing up. Jank the Tang with over 8,000. You've been going quick, boy. What's up with 8,000? Oh, you think you've only, yeah, they're playing last September. When uh, when I met Jank, he had brought a Stompa to a RTT. And he was just like, I got Stompa. I got Gaz. I got all the big characters. What's good? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> everybody at the event was like, who is this guy? What's happening? I'm like, that's my boy. That's who that is now. So Wicked Joe. Yeah, he says, uh, most of my stuff is not painted. But I still roll up to the tournament and crump. In a way, that is something to be happy about and not happy about. First of all, what are you doing? You're only participating in half of it because right. you don't lose the battle point. But you do show up and you meet a lot of people. And that is another huge part of the hobby. So there's no wrong way to enjoy the hobby. But, you know, something at Adepticon that people bring up is you do actually have to have... They do a painted score also for the armies yes. and people going to the top 16. And I know some people get mad about that. But I've seen what was <laughs> made it, and one of my buddies uses just contrast paints, and he was fine. So it's not necessarily about being good. It's about being um, meeting little requirements like actually doing your base. Instead of putting like red on your base and being like, oh, I got it based. No, you add to actually put a little bit of basing material. So it wasn't even a skill threshold. It was a effort threshold, right. which actually discouraged power players and people from just jumping faction to faction. And I'm in favor of that because not because i hate power players because my friends are power players it's because if someone's too much of a power player that they can't even paint their army and they put barely any paint on their models they are more than likely to actually forget some of the rules and mess them up like we've seen during the war games live stream where one of the players some necron players was just accidentally um shooting his warriors and hitting on threes instead of fours it's not because he's necessarily a power player, It's but when you're changing between armies and things like that, you're very likely to kind of slightly interchange rules or miscommunicate strats and things like that. Right. So if you can't put enough effort into painting your army to be at a top table, I don't know if I trust you to know all your rules in every circumstance word by word, right? Because there's some rules that are just slightly marginally different and the wording does matter. So that's the only reason why I actually care about that. And it's also part of the experience to have all painted models on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, now that there's some people out there starting to record the games live, it just yeah. is better for people watching at home too. So it's all really about an experience and it's always going to be better if things are painted. Yes, sir. And Rock, Rock Lobster, yeah, dude, it was auto explode from Flying Headbutt. Exactly, sir. <laughs> he said, oh, McFadden asked a good question. Oh, that, hey chat, what's a good orchid to buy for spare bits so I can turn other vehicles into looted tanks? I might magnetize my space marine stuff to double dip. Yes. Um, I personally oh Joe just said the same thing, and I agree. Killer cans are a great kit for bits as a whole. Um, and then also, but he said for vehicles, but I was gonna say also flash kits because they give you a lot of banners. Like they give you weird skulls, they give you little orc skull, like little orc heads, and they give you uh, actual poles. So things like that are actually cool. 
Um, as for looted, uh, did you mean what's a good? Yeah, he said an orc kit. Uh, that would be the boom daka. Um, sorry, the uh, I'm messing up the big plane. Pretty much the plane kit because there's four planes in one. <clears throat> that kit. If you don't end up making the big boom exploding plane, I have the one, but I always mess up its name on stream. Um, if you don't make the big version of the plane, that means you get all its bits left over. Because so, say you make it into a burner bomber, right, or a DACA jet. Mm -hmm. They're the very simple designs, right? So that means the big uh, gun that goes on the bottom of the do boom exploding plane. I have the plane, god dang it. But that plane has a bunch of different guns and weapons on it and bits. If you just make the DACA jet version, you get a bunch of bits left over from that for your vehicle. So yeah, I would you recommend actually gave that. me that uh, underbelly turret mm -hmm. yes. to, to so kit bash for my stuff. If you're speaking of specifically orc vehicles to get into other looted ones, I would say the plane helps. You get random cannons and guns. Um, so yeah, I would say that's the one I'm aware of. So yeah, he goes, what? Uh, clip just... The clip? Yeah, he says, uh, what are we raffling? We are raffling some of our merch, so mainly shirts. I think we're mainly just going to give out shirts. Cause... This, mm -hmm. We thought, so last time we gave out the Battle Force box, yeah. right? And it's because we felt like it was very, um, complimentary of a bunch of different people's armies and collections, yet we don't know exactly where the community lies with the Stompa box because so many people already own one. So it was kind of like, do I know if I give, we go those out. If we, there was even times with the beast snagger box where people were rejecting the prize because they already had that stuff, which was nice of you to not be greedy. But the point was, is that we want everybody to just get, and we had a bunch of different winners now. How many right. are we gonna have now? Like, uh, we'll have like 10, 10 or so different yeah, winners. Last time we only had uh, like three. three. So this, we try to just expand it out a little bit. All right, does it mean in the future we wouldn't give away other models? Of course we would. We just want to make sure it's something that people will actually communicate with. So if you guys like to see other things, let us know too. But the merch is new, and we wanted to just get some more people out, and people were really receptive for it. So, yeah. yeah. It was also uncertain when that was going to come out. That's true. And we already hit 2K, so we want to celebrate with you guys for showing us all the love and support. So. Yes, sir. So all you got to do is tell us your shirt signs and everything if you win, and then we send it. You can use it for anything you want, from cleaning stuff to making your own <laughs> headband to showing up at events with it, wearing it, and being identified by other org players from far away, which happens when I go to events. Yeah, right. and, you know, people walk up to me, and it's really cool. And here's some also purple mandos with the olive skin. I, awesome that I appreciate that. Oh, and then, yeah, he said, if I'm, I'm willing to... Oh, that was the last picture from that. He said, I'm willing to scrap the entire kit. Then I would say the plane might be a good one or the battle wagon the you know the battle wagons you'll see when you walk up to the plane kit it's a thick heavy box yeah it is so i would you know i'd suggest that it'd be kind of crazy looking but it would it would be very fun and then we have another from john wheat it says love the channel did not fully appreciate the big trade-off that artist nails versus fight on death gives you especially on fight first enemies Yes, sir. Um, so thank you for shouting that out. And I'm glad because it's always about being competent, not necessarily strictly competitive. It's about being competent as a player with your rules, with your factions rules, with the Warhammer 40k rules, general rules, the scoring system, the mission and the deployment. Just cover that. Get that going. And then you'll become a much, much better player. You actually just chasing a list or picking up the strongest models is be marginally different to your actual win success because orcs are not a plug and play army like that you know right. understand the combat phase how to move how to stage when to call the wah these are skills these are not data sheet game winning things you know and here was a diorama from the right. event so this was a diorama from uh two gits that we met that were participating in the doubles and this was like kind of offshoot of the tournament where they were going to judge people's models and mm -hmm. their paint schemes and if they made dioramas even better so this is only half of it unfortunately we weren't able to find them the next day where mm -hmm. they had another half with uh what was it, eldari yeah because you can see like a crashed eldari mm -hmm. playing in the back mm -hmm. but uh yeah i mean you got two different orc armies here it, it's kind of hard to see but it's different themes where the top orc units they're the he was telling us his orc army dwells in the caves in the so, mountain yeah but that's why they're like um albino i guess you could say <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they don't get much light and then you had the whole jungle themed uh beast snag is down below so i like that because it was like two clans and then they were coming together to kill the, the eldar the knife ears so everybody loves that john anto also made his own which we'll show later as well 
So shout out to John for being creative too. And then he was wearing the big uh, farmer outfit, which hilarious, which is hilarious. <laughs> that was awesome. John said, I bet Scarboys is a strat. That's not a bad idea, especially for the green tide. Here's a picture of one of the gits we met. Shout out to the git. I just didn't remember your name necessarily, but I appreciate you. And he actually came again with his friends on his team tournament and they were all dressed up in paint and everything we missed oh, it right. but it's on facebook so shout out to you the chapel was awesome we were holding it me and david flexing you can see in the background those are the adepticon team banners that's literally how important teams are to adepticon that they're the only banners that are there yeah they just bring the team ones so well, we'll get a wall tactics banner one day boys that's what the plan is now Heck yeah especially if we get two teams more more opportunities more chances yeah, for sure. And then another picture with another person, the clip. So we met another git right there. Appreciate you coming out. We loved it. We were just standing around, walking around, taking pictures. My hair gave up that day, but it's all good. <laughs> um, so we'll see. Um, you guys got more chats because from here. Oh, and now we just so those pretty much those were the end of the Adepticon ones. Your couple of gits we met was awesome. Now we're gonna go on to the community pictures, but we have the Q&A for the picture, the questions, right? Yeah, the notes. So let me pull it up real quick so we can pull up some of the notes and start going through them. We'll be showing the pictures. These are, Now, these pictures coming up are from our Discord, our community. So if you're a hobbyist and everything like that, there's we always do a community stream about once a month. Post them in there. It's easier if you at me or send them directly to me, um, and then I'll start finding them and putting them up. I have to be selective, but you, so you have to be completely done and painted, you know, so just stick to that you don't even have to be super high skill you just have to show you put effort and you were trying to be creative in some sort of way so don't worry about it like this git was so this git was actually at adepticon and he's in our discord shout out to aaron he is showing a gasgul thraka slaying crumping gilliman and impaling him with his own <laughs> sword that's what his was love it so i'm gonna leave this up for a second so you can see it real quick he said jank the tank said i think the most Telling distraction between Beast Nagas and regular boys is the fact that Beast Naga boys have abilities that don't need a leader, where regular boys have abilities that only do. Yeah. Very, yeah. very true. So I'm about the distinction. Yeah, the distinction. And the whole point is you need leaders for almost everything in the orcs right now, and it's very bothersome to me. Yeah. Um, I like that we need to actually be able, like David said, we need to get off on something that's pretty much not the water turn or give us multiple water turns, which is something that Jang's bringing up is the boys almost do nothing on their data sheet ability. Their data sheet ability is how we get two leaders. Ah, right. That's it. right. We roll, reroll battle shock test. Like, shut up, shut up. There's no <laughs> get out of here, dude. You know, only with the war boss. What's going on, man? So yeah, great job there. That's a good point. And it does bother me and it needs war boss. Yeah, like, one of their advantages is that they're cheaper and their ability is like, hey, make me more expensive. Come on, dude. GW, to, do better. <laughs> that's a good way to summarize it. We're cheaper. We can't do anything. But if you pay more points and give up <laughs> secondaries, you can use us. Hey, relax, bro. <laughs> no, even though we know truck boy spam is good, too. I'm just yeah. bringing that out. So, And Devin says, I keep thinking I need some killer cans. I recommend killer cans, bro. They're really cool. They get cool bits. My Warbones and Mega Armor actually came from killer can bits in an AOS model. Um, they look nice. They're fun to paint. They on and off become useful in the meta. GW sometimes makes them super cheap. They constantly have three damage. Cool bits. Definitely get some killer cans, even if it's only one, dude. Like I say, just well, you just, just fill out your collection with things you like. You won't feel bad. And then John Wheat says, uh, "Could we get Mech, jo uh, Mech Jaws come back as enhancements?" Uh, yeah, why not? They, but they would be probably in the speed wall or like some kind of right. mech wall, right? But they could be called that. Yeah, we could definitely see some inspiration from that turn into enhancements. Yeah, for sure. So let's answer some of these questions real real quick because we have about 10, maybe more, and we'll get obviously communicate with chat still, and we still have some pictures left. So leave some of this one up. I thought it was really cool, and it's four. Let me just um, answer this question. So first question, will CSM codex release before the orc codex? Well, considering we got the leak, right <clears throat> not no more <laughs> mm, if you would have asked me yesterday i would have said pie maybe um but today i'm gonna say no um now i'm gonna say no because now that we're getting the releases even a little bit gw is gonna jump the gun and just be like no 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 look look we're, we're, don't steal our thunder you right. disagree there no 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 i agree and yeah. i wouldn't honestly be surprised if this is their tactic of slowly leaking kind of building up the anticipation before they do their previews that way more people are paying attention for when those warhammer community articles come out they get more visitors to their sites more eyes on orcs and yeah that'd be a valid strategy in my okay, opinion so you're saying gw does it intentionally 
Possibly. Ooh. Look at David, this conspiracy theorist over here. Not going <laughs> to tell me the government isn't fair. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Why don't you see the Big Mac with a shock attack gun? Only 20 more points. And you need a then a mech gun with a custom mega blaster. So why you don't see more of them? I think their strength is the bothersome problem, in my opinion. So the fact that they're only strength nine means that they aren't reliably popping transports and armor. If you put them to strength 11, 12, maybe 10, but 11, 12, um, I would see people bringing them. Yeah. I would see people bringing them. They're just too weak where they're at right now. They need more strength. They're already not super reliable. Of course, they get to re-roll one. If you put them with looters, you get to re-roll the whole hit roll. But at that point, you're still inconsistent amount of shots, which you got to keep that because you're an orc. You can't have a consistent amount of shots. Who do you think you are? <laughs> but, you know, you could have a decent strength because orcs are supposed to be the strongest. So when my gun be the strong? I mean, a shock attack gun should be the strongest. It's literally manipulating right. the warp with a gun. OK, so I don't think it's asking too much to make it over strength 10. I need to be able to pop light armor, medium armor with it or at least wounded better, um, considering that I'm only hitting on a four and I have inconsistent shots. So I'm very much inclined and it's D6 plus one damage. So right. you're going to wound vehicles that you want to wound on fives, you know, maybe fours if it's a weak vehicle, if you're strength nine. And then you're only going to put one, two damage into it, you know, like two damage into it. Like, nah, man, I need higher strength and then i'm willing to take the risk on the amount of shots and the d6 it's a good question there because i know some people really look into it because they want the battle shock test right and i get that battle shock is super useful into some matchups but it's also unreliable therefore it can't be the only reason you bring it um shout out to people who do like it because i like it i got two painted up and ready so I'm not, it's not that i hate it i actually do have two and painted up america says no shooty detachment doesn't seem so well, uh, we were talking about earlier how the mob, uh, the dread mob, has that hazardous stipulation for the abilities, and so that could be the shooty detachment. Okay. Possibly, we have to see more, right? We've only gotten a small teaser, so it's still too early to really tell. That's what's up, and right here you can see this, uh, this grit get give us. Give him a scratch. I got the same model. Mine yeah. isn't painted also. Dude, the clown knows. And this was the <laughs> same git that made the gas, actually. So he just sent this to me also. It's in our Discord. The clown knows on the squig puts it over the top. Check this out if you're not looking. Bro, that's an awesome. This might be my favorite version of this model that I've seen because he kept the core colors of what it is. Looks bright. But then the little clown knows. Just makes it outrageous. Yeah. So outrageous. <laughs> I thought, because we talked about this earlier, I, we thought it was a clown knows. But now that I'm looking at it again. It has to just be a Christmas tree ornament because there's other Christmas. Oh yeah, there. Around there. <laughs> good kind of, It just makes it even funnier. Good shout out. It's even funnier because it goes cohesively together. Yeah. As yeah. for the next question, how would you run Uftak at a local game store? Shout out to the people who use them for fun, casually, legends. I love you guys. You're a part of my heart. How would I run him? Run him with knobs because he has a deep strike, guys. He has deep strike built in. Um. So him also he has the war boss keyword so he still mm -hmm. activates the minus one to wound um ability from the knobs oh. so very cool um as for his abilities don't necessarily make sense because you know you're not really trying to fight titanic stuff with him but you know if your knobs have to go into something that is titanic you know and you have let's say gaz's makari lethal ability on the wall uftak might be a little bit there to be helpful and put some devastating wounds into someone so I would run them with knobs, put them in reserve, deep strike them in, rapid ingress them in. Boom. And remember, he the reason I picked knobs is because he has the war boss keyword. Therefore, he gets minus one to move. So shout out to you for using them. Very cool. I love it. Um, Utox, awesome. I got mine getting painted up right now. Let me see some of these questions real quick that you guys are putting in chat before I fall too far behind. Shout out to Cal. Welcome back to America. He says, if these are real leaks, the mech detachment would be the docket detachment based on the f the leak it feels strong actively being able to choose keywords okay okay yeah. i appreciate the enthusiasm from that because you said it feels strong so that means you're willing to risk your life with hazardous to be strong <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like that very awesome very cool i love that and uh okay i can see why you think that people saying deadly two vies on the two plus or wonderful orc stratagem um yeah it would be awesome i i i want it to be automatic if I waste CP, I don't want to have to roll and take the risk. 
right? But I do understand it can't be automatic 2d6 from your stomp, uh, right? <laughs> so I'm very much okay with if it's d3 or one or less, it auto happens. If it's d6, you have to roll for it, All right? Mm -hmm. So that, that keeps it from being abused necessarily. Um, and he said it worked any better than he'd write to. Mac gun kit is a nice sleeper for bits. Yes, it is because you don't even have to use all the bits of it to make the mech gun. You can just use a cannon and a, like an axle and put a wheel on it and be like, that's good enough, bro. What do you need the armor for? <laughs> we suck anyways. You know, so it's cool. And Channel Pony said the truck kit's good. Truck kit is good. Um, he said knob kits and old boy kits are also bangers. The old boy kit's superior, in my opinion, to the other, the new boy kit. He says. That's what I want. Machines with extra violence bolted on. Who cares of blowing themselves up? I ain't met to, I ain't met a beast naga without a cybernetic. That's true. Or a, or a space marine lieutenant with a real hand. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's <laughs> constantly blowing up his arms. Okay. And this is the last picture from this git just because I liked his creativity and because I seen him at the time he was there. And it was a very, he was taken to the back for judging on his display board. So very cool by him. Um um, and it was him and his buddy just playing duos. They were only there for one day. So they were really cool guys. Um, but what it, his idea was between their duos army, now I can actually explain it. Their dual army theme was Grey Knights recruited orcs to work for them, but the orcs would only take the job if they were able to get some loot from the Grey Knights. Yeah. Boom. So take that for what it is. Look for it. You want to argue, argue with him and knock his teeth out. All right. So <laughs> he says, um, he said, went over the leaks already. Yes, we did. But mention it again i'll refer a couple things real quick it'll be all good and just a summary you know and he goes yeah to clarify i'm willing to sacrifice the entire kit okay then yeah one def makes i once made a death dread out of a truck kit okay you're awesome <laughs> then yeah everybody everything everybody said is true then that your creativity is your only limitation because you're an orc he says he's just mentioning how it's awesome channel point says i hope i win a shirt i hope well if you would have seen us in person you might have got one yeah, right. and that's on you buddy because you know you could have hit us up he said, I, but yeah, you can still get one, of course, but I hope you win too. He says, pick up a plane. Yeah, I said, plane, I like that too. I got a Stampa. Okay, make sure you got them all cut up in these chats a little bit so I don't fall too far behind from you guys. He says, all right, he gets great chatting with you. All right, guys, let's go past the flux in the hand. Oh, that's past the flux. Adam, let's go, buddy. Okay, okay. Love you. You're awesome in Discord all the time. Very helpful, oh. very sweet. Yeah, okay. Now I know who you are. Fantastic. Let me move on this picture again. This is from Jay Hugh in our chat as well. He says, how do I start collecting war uh, orcs with one war boss, 120 boys, one squad of Gretchen? It's funny when they die. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because um, my collection was about 90 boys because I had three squads of three with the old gas. And then I had Grotz. Yeah, that was, was my actual collection. <laughs> so you make it as a joke, but I swear that was my actual collection at an actual GW, not 120, it was 90. But at my actual GW store to this day, on Gork and Mork, that was my collection, but it was gas. Yeah, I still remember those early games we played, and yeah. that was legit your list. That was legit my <laughs> list. I just showed up like, and I had a box, and I would just go like, and just put them on the table. <laughs> People would be like, "Oh my god," because it was a GW store, and I was like, "No, don't worry about it, bro." <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool. He says, "To be fair, oh, let's answer these questions real quick." Yeah. He says, "What is your favorite unit and character of orcs?" Ooh. All right, Dave, you can go first all right well my favorite unit for sure has to be the mega track scrap jet i just oh, i just love sure. the aesthetics you, of it said like, that many, yeah. many times. it's got that world war ii uh airplane kind of vibe to it and i'm a huge uh fan of history so that just kind of speaks to me uh, what about you all right so i do have a lot of love for the battle wagon in many ways but i could understand people see it's a boring answer but I would say if I had to say my favorite unit unit, just how it feels when you bring something big and soppy to the table, you feel really good when you bring the effigies of Gork and Mork. So Gork and Mork are my favorite units slash kit, right? Mm -hmm. Gork, possibly Mork, Gork and not, Mork and not is what I'm talking about. Whenever I see either one of those and it's painted up on the table and it looks good, I get excited. I really want to use my Mork and not, but he sucks. And I still like, come on, man, I'm trying. And then my friends are like, I killed it in one activation. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh Gorkonaut's super playable, painting mine up still. But uh yeah, those are my those are probably my favorites. Um, love the stomp of two. If you just ask me, I'm gonna love everything, so it's hard. I'm trying to reserve myself. All right. And then David, <laughs> as for your favorite or a character, uh, I gotta go with uh Snickra. Just okay. the stacks of that model, too. Are we uh, wait? I appreciate my sneaky gits. I was gonna say, are we 
chat can ask us how they want us to answer this or what do you think he meant but do you think he meant like by lore or did he mean like just by how it looks right you know because that's going to give you different answers so or even by rules mm -hmm. yeah or even by rules as for the model my favorite model is boss zagstruck as the actual model um i think he just actually looked significantly bigger than his uh storm boy brethren right. so he stands out he has the cool little cap his power claws on his leg he has a gun he has a rocket on his back he's in a cool stance and a cool pose um and he's cool on the table because he's fast and he likes to punch and do all these different things he always has a built-in feel no pain for the last couple editions so i always like that too because i think war bosses having a feel no pain feels somatic especially if they have cyborg bits um so boss is extra probably my favorite when it comes to uh that model kit or the big mac with a shock attack gun kind of alternates between those um as for favorite character like that i've <clears throat> like as a person uh, personally i'd say captain bad Ruck because he's in actual books so i've actually got to hear some of his dialogue in those books and he's kind of funny and he you know the fact that he's able to do business means that he shows his um intelligence right so he understands how to cooperate with other guys he understands how to betray people he understands how to work with people and get what they want that shows a very high level of intellect for an orc I mean, he's proper cunning but he also shows the capability to destroy things with his guns so i think that's sick and that's why he's probably one of my favorites so that's that's how i answer that question next question is what do you think of walkers in 10th edition they need a buff i hope the detachment rules are good or correct um more cannot gork and not getting a two plus save would definitely help if you're not going to give them better invulns or capability to have a four up invuln for one turn or strat or anything like that if you're not going to give them that then you need to give them a two plus armor save so that they can actually take some saves when they're getting shot at by anti tank weapons um and or increase their wounds because gw kept dropping their wounds last but not least the more cannot needs a um stronger weapon on his death cannon because it's just strictly not strong enough he doesn't do his job he's not popping transports either he makes no sense that's why the gorgonauts must be playable than him uh death dread needs to come down with my opinion 30 points you can't spam each one you can't put three in a three-man unit anymore um so you can't swarm a table with them so them being cheaper wouldn't be crazy or broken um the shock uh, the battle shock test isn't reliable so you can't really put too much cost into that as well hitting on threes innately um doesn't help you so that's why I said detachment rules might be able to counter some of these things, right? Especially if you lower the points. But you can't just be like hitting on threes in melee and think that's still good enough because you can whiff very easily. The things you want to hit him with have invulns for the most part. So I need reliable hits at least, and, and wounding could be nice. So I think of them hitting on twos with the data, not in the data sheet, but with the detachment would help greatly. And they need to come down in points because 135 for death dread is not cool. Um so and the things from between their weapons would be cool grot tent grot killer cans i think they need to come down again a little bit they were 35 points last edition i thought that was actually a fair points cost for them for the most part um they would never felt broken and even with the current rules we have now they still wouldn't be broken so because everything's toughness went up so them staying about the same and strength output and with everything means they just wouldn't be broken it's just right. they're super slow and they're super unruly on the table so that's what I feel about the walkers. Stampa obviously costs way too much. So, and the Gargantuan Squigoth is awesome. And this Orc Rocker is fantastic, by the way. So I loved it. Orc Rocker right here in the, in the, yeah, in the picture. I'm going to just shout this that is out. An awesome model. Mm -hmm. Let me see uh, some of you guys' chats real quick before I finish some more of these uh, questions, right? He goes, let me see this. Shout out to you guys. He said, do, do, do. Shane, the, he said, you can find the plane box. Oh, that's a good point because the planes are bad right now. You might be able to get a plane from someone box for cheap and then use it for, for junk, right? So it's fantastic. Um, Absolute keys is set for us. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody's commenting right now. I'm trying to catch back up. I definitely think, oh, I definitely think in GW does intentional leaks. They have way too many holes not to. Mm, <laughs> mm, look at you conspiracy theorists, huh? It's a dude. good way to promote. Boy, man. what are you talking about, man? You got dude, don't be telling me the government isn't fair. I don't I don't trust you guys now. Conspiracy theorists. <laughs> no, I was kidding. So he goes, We have uh I think the Big Mac with shock attack gun at strength 10 would be a great breakpoint. Dreadnoughts, lost tank, arbiters, all at T10. Exactly. That's why yes. I said T ten or eleven, because I need and they can do four up invulns. Like I said, putting only two damage into an Arbinger would hurt. So yeah, I just need them to be. I would. I'd prefer eleven. That's just me, because then you don't threaten like land raiders and things to make them feel bad necessarily. But you can at least wound a bit more reliably because you're hitting on fours. Unless they add abilities so that we get crazy volume, then I can stay eleven, eleven, ten. How, how much eleven is in strength? Eleven is in the game right now. I'm trying to think of, an of weapons. 
Yeah. Not not that many. I mean, even ten league, or twelve. Yes, even leagues of Voltan has like strength ten weapons. But right. you know, you know, Katana's a T eleven. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> and then that's a good point though. Uh, t -t 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 red, that's the red Gabo and the bouncer. Yeah, it's the I have the kit. I'm looking at it up here. At the correct name. Oh, it is the red Gabo. I have yes, them. I have the I have the box right here. I didn't uh, put it together because I didn't paint it yet. That is 100. Yeah, Aaron was. Yeah, it's 100 percent an ornament. David <laughs> called it out. Aaron, there you are. Collect membership, Aaron. Be offended. Yeah, I see you, buddy. All right. He said, Rudolph the Red Nose Quig. That's hilarious. Fingers crossed for the Dev Dread Skull strat that lets us mind control a vehicle. Yes, I remember that one. And you can make it blow up or shoot somebody else. That would be sick. He said, You guys should contact GW at some point. Official share leaks with share with orcs. Uh, content creators wouldn't be surprised if you could get something. I think the threshold to be partnered with GW for any kind of information is 10,000 subscribers. Yes. So that means we just have to go share with everybody and then forcibly subscribe, make people subscribe. So when you see another person that's collecting orcs, if they didn't subscribe, challenge them to a one on one duel. And then when you beat them, you get to use their phone and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just only kidding, you guys. Be nice to each other. All right, he goes. Hope any kind of mech would be able to lead flash gets and uh, if the dread mob is a shooting detachment. Yeah, I need the mech or uh, the mechs in general need to be more involved. They need to be able to put in units. Like I'd like if the mech could just, you know, help kill the cans as a whole and chill with them. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that GW is leaving on the table. So I think um, if they follow the tier in a track and at least make everything kind of go together a little bit, it'd be really cool. Like. They did a good job with the Tyranids by making characters make sense and go with units and nothing's too strong, which is also why they're not that good. But you get what I'm saying. Thematically, it feels good. Thematically, it feels good. Relax, guys. Why is Aaron so aggressive in chat? What is Aaron doing? Right there. Is that, I ain't squaring up with no gray name. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Green yourself up, you <laughs> fake a Aaron. It's hilarious because <laughs> when Aaron joined the Discord, Aaron Klaus, which is who put in the, the, the gray knight, <laughs> the gray knight things, he, um, he, he, as soon as he got there, Aaron out of nowhere just jumped out of a bush <laughs> or something. He was like, I challenge you for the right to be called Aaron. Like, it was hilarious. Well, funny thing, Aaron's right there, too. Yeah, I know. That's why it's so <laughs> awkward. So, you guys are crazy. That's fantastic. That's proper orky, though, right? If you guys aren't trying to get stuck in with each other, then it doesn't make sense. So, and shout out to Wappa for five gifted Let's wall go. tactic membership. Talking about you, great Umis. He's talking about you guys that have an, uh, collected the membership so we have about 75 plus memberships that were donated this evening yep. go ahead and try to collect it if you don't then that just means other gets it to remain in the wall and you get just compliment you get the complimentary super chats you get different badges you could be upgraded to a boy you can become a deaf dread you know we have a bunch of guys that are finally making up the food chain you know like wicked joe and such that are getting different badges and looking sick so yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, WAP, very much. Very generous of you. You're always a great supporter. You're always a nice individual and fun to interact with. So thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. James oh, James Bond, new subscriber. Let's, Let's go. go. I've always wanted 007 <laughs> on my side. What's up? So he said, is the golf uh, Raka Mike a stick bomb? Absolutely. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Good observation. And here, speaking of Death Dreads and Wakas, this one looks fantastic. So I had to highlight it. Oops, I did an accident. You didn't see that. All right, so... <laughs> It says, uh, no given. He says, Grot tanks and mega tanks are my favorites. Shock attack run, boss grit, thampa, super luda, time travel. See yourself, kills time. So you can have two of them for his two favorite. Uh, so I can, he, so he can have two of his favorite gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he goes back, he see, boss, uh, grits, uh, grits guts. He pretty much goes into the warp, meets another version of himself, kills himself, so he can have two of his favorite guns. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. That's a, that's a cunning game. That's very orky <laughs> as well. So we have another question here. All right. Uh, what's the origin of the channel and the future outlook? So if you, you want to cover it. So the origin of the channel. Um, kind of came off a whim to a certain extent. It. It, it came from the fact that um, I was starting to be back and forth on my love for the hobby for the most part because it's, I, I couldn't understand why the orc community wasn't more united. I couldn't just go to YouTube, type in something, and appreciate orc content. And if I did look up orc content, it was always us getting beat up or only competitive talk. It was 
it, it didn't feel very orky and I needed my love for my hobby to be well-rounded because competitive play doesn't just take it for me either. I'm not a great hobbyist or painter. I'm not super creative as an individual, just being honest. And so even my own painting satisfaction wouldn't give me the return. It was difficult for me as an individual. Um, I took great satisfaction in the couple things that I have painted well and kit bashed. But ultimately, like I, you know, it's what I preach and what we say on here, both of us, is the hobby is much more than one little aspect that you excel at. It's everything. Therefore, the origins of the channel are I needed all of the things about that I love about orcs to be in one place. That's why I also want to do lore. It's like because that's the origin of the channel is I want us to have a great wall community where everybody I know every orc player to some degree appreciates every part of the hobby. Like if you're a good painter, if you're a good kit basher, if you're a good player, if you just read lore and there needs to be somewhere where everything can kind of get meshed into one because that's what we are. We're having fun, right? Everybody else is trying to win. Everybody else is trying to survive. Everybody else is trying to just be around or get stuck in some tank treads. We actually just enjoy everything. We're just having fun. So I wanted to have a channel that was just having fun, you know, competent. Mm -hmm. So that's where you think. Well, I was just going to kind of add, like, mm -hmm. we're relatively new to the hobby. We started uh, around COVID. Mm -hmm. And part of our initial experience in one of the, I guess, um, fortunate events for Eddie was that he got a lot of models from other players oh, that man. gave mm -hmm. up on orcs. Good point. Because there was no common place to go and get tactics and advice mm -hmm. and just overall moral support. So it was like a little disheartening and we kind of, well, that's why I got on board because I wanted to help it contribute to that and kind of help people stay in the hobby. Mm -hmm. We've lost friends over the years that true. just kind of left the hobby because of certain experiences. And that's why we're, we're trying to create a community here to kind of satisfy each little niche of within uh, 40K. And, um, you know, the feedback we're getting is feels really good. We appreciate you guys supporting us. And we're glad that we're trying, we're getting close to fully realizing that, that goal and that dream that we had. Yeah. That, Cause that's what it, David's hundred percent. Right. When I showed up at a local games workshop, I actually almost quit cause I had a bad car accident. That's another story. But I came in like, Hey guys, I have to quit 40 K for whatever reason. I have to get a new car. I have to do these things. I'm all jacked up. And people just gave me orc models from the GW store, people that were at the GW store, and I'm going to say which one or whatever. They didn't give it to me in the store. You're not allowed to do that. But people outside, I met them there, you know, they in their, hey, dude, uh, let me show you something. And then they went to the trunk and they were like, I tried to collect orcs. Um, it was hard. I kept getting shot off the table. Here you go. Please stay as an orc player. That's what I heard so <laughs> many times. Please stay. We don't have an orc player. And, you know, I didn't even meet many orc players in person either. Like it was hard to come across orc players, even in the area where I'm at, where it's very heavy Warhammer 40k, because it's a learning curve within a learning curve. 40k is a shooty game, and orcs aren't the only army in 40k that hits on fives and shooting, right? Everybody else can complain whatever they want. The point is that we still have to cover the distance and shoot, and, and we have guns, so GW still accounts for that when they do our power curve, right? Other armies are like, well, I fight too. Yeah, but you either shoot, uh, uh, you shoot somewhat reliably, or you literally don't shoot at all. Therefore, they get to put all your power into punching. So then it becomes kind of offset. So it's a curve within a curve, and therefore I wanted people to kind of feel more involved and helpful and play and learn and make people competent. And that way you can enjoy the hobby if you're a great hobbyist and painter. But when you show up to play with your beautiful army, you're not just lost on what's about to happen right? Which is what happens a lot. And then you have great hobbyists that just give up on playing because there's too much to catch up. We're here to help make you competent. And that's done an end of rant on the origin of the channel, which we can go into more if ever people ever care. But yes. And then he said, will there be a guide to a 2k or beginner army? There's a second part to that question. <clears throat> oh, sorry. The future outlook, David. Yeah. So we got some plans in the works. Uh, one of them being um, considering that Eddie and I aren't really artistic or have a passion necessary for painting models. We're going to try to get one of our buddies on stream so we can have like actual hobby streams and you guys can actually see him go through his process of painting camera. models. And this is a guy that actually painted mo a lot of Eddie's models and he did a tremendous job. His, like, I, I love his scheme. I don't know if you want to pull something up so yeah. they can see what we're talking about, but this guy's super creative. And he paints so fast too, which is even more impressive considering the quality of his work. 
So that's something that we're going to try to test out, see how that goes. And th that way, these community streams, there's more to it, a little hobby. And, you know, it could motivate you guys to hobby, keep you guys entertained. And anyway. appeal to some of you super skilled gets, which I am not. So we don't have a good camera here to really show everything. But he likes to freehand a lot of the things he does because he's weird. Um, and I showed the pictures in Discord as well. This is freehand. Sorry, little lines and everything. He freehands all these things. My army is mostly purple. And he puts the green on the tires. He freehands his mouth and he makes it like a jungle theme. He likes to write wah on my things. Really cool. And then for my Morkanaut, which is right here, I have my metal orc rocker. So I do have the metal one and I just threw them on here. So, yeah, just so you, I just wanted to show that, that I like, you know, my stuff too. And then painted. So I appreciate it. And the future is that as well as I want to do a lore video. I want to make a... A uh, story kind of like the Gavin Bob one, if you guys are familiar with that one, where it's just about an ogre that just goes through life. Not sure what it's going to be. If you guys want to throw ideas out there and what's most popular, maybe that gets the most likes or something, we could start from there and start going. But I'm super excited to just make a a some kind of some kind of uh you know fan lore slash community lore that would be fantastic in the direction it goes. I want it to be posted out of Octarius sector though. Right. So keep that in mind. If you give me ideas, just so you know, I'm sticking to Octarius. And I think with how expansive the Warhammer universe is and how GW is working on multiple projects, multiple spinoffs, there's a lot of gaps still that can be, there's a lot of potential left on the table. And we're here to fill that gap. That's yes, right. And then and, uh, also uh, another thing to watch out for next Monday, we got uh, um What's his John Anto's John Anto. interview for his uh, successful Adepticon run, which is off meta list with no flash kits, no knobs with power claws, and no squig hog boys. Mm. Yep, got him. Yeah, top Adepticon. placing. Yeah. Yep, yes, sir. Um, yeah. Here's oh, a truck. Okay. Yeah, just one last. And then, of course, we're going to be here for tactics coverage on any rules just to help support the community. Fantastic. Yeah. And let's see what happened. Channel Pony saying, let's get, to, oh, no, let's do another channel. Channel Tony Pony, we'll get to 10K one day. You know what I mean? We've only been around eight, eight months. Eight, I think eight, we've eight, only been months. around. And me and David didn't even use social media. We weren't known gits. We didn't have any plugs. We just literally started screaming into the, the warp, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you guys called, you guys came running. So uh, will there be a guide to a 2K beginner army? Absolutely. Especially with the codex coming out, because it'll help give a more well-rounded kind of pointing of if you want this. We can put you there if you want this we can point you towards there and how you build that up and what kits to go for and ideas to put through it so that's a good one thank you very much for that question because it is very helpful and hopefully the 1k one was actually interesting the next question is is there hope uh that the forge world models make a comeback into the codex or Ooh. coming to the codex um some of them i think so so when we speak of forge world you can also speak of the characters the resin characters so we've seen snick rot got upgraded from a resin model to an actual plastic model and for that reason you know there's hope and speaking of hope channel pony gifted 10, 10 wall tactic membership yeah. let's go channel pony let's go you get i appreciate you let's go channel pony there we go even though I slightly forgive you for not finding us at Adepticon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this was, uh, uh, it would have been you. awesome to meet you. Yeah, man. yeah. OG right there, yeah. guys. Literally, when we had like 40, 50 members, Channel Pony appeared out of nowhere like, is that a wall calling? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Literally streams, are, we were just talking to him pretty much. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Alex T became a new oh, channel member. Let's, let's go. go. I appreciate you. Get beautiful. That's, let's go. Thank you, Alex. Nice to meet you, buddy. And we're glad you're here. Give a great wall, a shot to the wall. And then let's see. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the Forge World thing, because I was still chanting about that before I keep up with you, uh, Chance, before you keep up with you guys, you gets in the chat. Um, this is where I'm worried, right? I'm worried we're going to lose the Mecha Dread, which I would be sad because I got three right now. Um, I'm worried we're going to lose some of our epic characters like Captain Badrook, who's been missing from the shop for months. So it doesn't even look like a reboxing necessarily. Or like I just said, my favorite model was Boss Zagstruck. All of a sudden, what if he's missing? So I am worried about that. I mean, um, the kill tank, what if that disappears? Right. I think it shouldn't. I think that's one of the ones that should move to the codex because we don't really have a gun platform tank. 
a battle wagon is a, more of a transport than actual damage dealing tank, even though the kill tank can deliver damage to, I mean, can transport too. The point is, is that its cannon is for delivering damage. Um, I like the Grot Mega Tanks. Those look really cool. It's like a weird boat. But will GW bring that? Mm -hmm. right. You know, knobs with war bikers? No, I don't even... I don't even know if GW is keeping up with how the knobs are right now. I mean, I, I, the knobs on foot, they need to upgrade the mega knobs looking like little box shoe boxes. So I don't think GW is looking to make a whole new kit just for bikers necessarily either. I would say we should be grateful and happy if most of our stuff makes it over, um, like doesn't get just axed from existence, right? And so in the codex and uh the epic characters are ones that i'm actually the most worried for things that i think could make it are grot kill tanks because they're little and they're just another grot unit um and maybe like a grot uh little grot tanks but the grot kill tank and the grot little the actual grot tanks like the small ones mm -hmm. so i think those are two of them that i think will end up kind of possibly coming i would really hope a mech dread would because i like that median between a gorkonaut which is titanic in a death dread, right? To go from a death dread all the way to a Morgan out Titanic is a bit much, but going from a death dread that's like a little bitty walker to a nice mech dread that's 16 wounds, I like that. I would like if we kept that. And it makes sense to have a mech in a walker. So that's how I feel about that, you gitch. So the next question, what is the possibility of getting a weird boy boss? Oh. That would really come down to GW making lore based off it. Right. And then doing it so the possibility is very low until gw actually releases lore based off that luckily with the introduction of oof tech and things like that we know that that's a possibility in the future just not anytime soon right yeah so yeah <laughs> another one is how do you fight drakari um there's a bit more to that that'd be like a whole tactic video but if i can summarize it having some guns helps understanding that they have a ton of lance um so you know what not to necessarily incorporate in your list if you have to fight a bunch of drakari helps understanding that stuff like Maz is super hard for them to kill because they without lances right in melee i mean um understanding that they don't hold primary necessarily so if you can keep up with secondary scoring and then deny them primary that's very important as well not letting your transports get shot from lances and then also charged very important and keeping a track on which of the units have enhancements for yourself so they can disembark and move and charge you or disembark and ignore your overwatch Overwatch is very necessary, or guns as well is very necessary. Something like a flash kit, if you really have to, even Ludas might be able to do it um, because their vehicles are actually pretty soft. And so something like a Luda with full rerolls when they go to, because a lot of the time they will tag objectives with their transports, right? Or they'll disembark them and then they'll tag them with the transports. Something like even a Luda bomb with a shock attack gun on screen might actually work. Remember, I'm trying to keep you guys open to whatever models you have or own. <clears throat> So I would say stay away from big stompy things that can get easily murked by lances. If you're going to use something like a Maz, understand that he can only take a certain amount of lances, so you don't give him all of them. And then having some kind of shooting um, definitely helps offset that and understanding how not to get to disembark and then charge is very important. So know their rules, know their enhancements, and be willing to get stuck in and keep up the points on secondaries. Very important because they're a secondary heavy army. And then they're going to they're gonna try to secondary, keep have secondary heavy, and then they're going to try to get the most primary they can the last three turns of the game. So they might not even interact with you on primary that much on the first two. So just take that board control. That way you don't lose out on all your primary and continue to score your secondary. So good question. And then the last one is Gork or Mork. <laughs> Well, there is no Gork or Mork. They're both because they're one in the same, right? One is cunning but brutal, and the other is brutal but cunning. So really, it's about, I always preach that is people are so worried about being Gorky, being brutal, that they forget that we are also always and that be Morky. It just each one calls for a different time, right? Sometimes you got to be a little cunning. If the gods didn't want us to be cunning at all, then when knobs got bigger, they wouldn't innately get smarter as well. Right, Uftak says that in the book that as he's getting larger, he's getting far more intelligent. And if you listen to any of the orc books, the big mechs become super crazy. You know, English, they get that they can hack servo skulls and have them speak the way that the Imperium can't even get them to do. Like orcs are super brilliant. And you think that comes just from Gork? Are you not paying attention? So you guys need to give Mork some respect. Put some respect on his name because it's Gork and Mork, not Gork or Mork. Right, but thank you, Gork and Mork, baby. I love it. So thanks for the question. That's for our Q and A questions. So let's get back to the chats, and then we'll close this one up. And um, 
we'll close this one up in a couple minutes or whatever, like me, like a dozen, 10 minutes or something. Let me get through these chats. So if you guys have anything to say, anything to yell at us, go ahead and do it now because I'm going to get reading all the chats and get through them right now and close it out. I see you, C. Wilkins. I see you, little homie, gray homie. I'm going to start collecting that membership, boy. I see you with the four W's and memberships for the new gets. Thank you, WAP. Appreciate all you guys. Like I said, it said, uh, chat inspired a new orc chant. You better get that green up before I get that mean up. <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah, this is my favorite. Um, though. Sorry, what, what is that? that what does the star mean? I don't know. <laughs> I but I'm starring this chat. Now, this this one's fantastic. McFadden, I'm glad you joined the chat. You made some good points here today. It's some fun, key little good points. A lot of you guys do, but just saying. It, it, you know that was a, that was a good one. Um, and then, yeah, we should say that you better get that green up before I get that mean up. All right, I'm gonna start saying that if I say it's because of you, then don't copyright me. All right, so Aaron <laughs> says, I'm the true one with double A. Well, <laughs> these are about to go to battle in chat. I love it. Is Gazgul Thraka better than Mazrog? No, it's the, neither is I'd say Mazrog is easier to use right now. The argument of better is subjective, and I know someone would argue with me. I see you, Happy Crumper, out there. Yeah, you would tell me that Gaz is just inferior. Well, it depends on how you build out your list. To tell me that your army does not gain a benefit from being a 33% output increase, at least when you call him Bridal Carnage as well, on top of lethal from Akari's aura, you can't tell me that's not important. The fact that knobs can now punch through almost anything in the game when you give them lethal and unbridled carnage, the fact that Beast Snagger boys uh, with unbridled carnage and lethal can now punch down a Catan, that's something Moz can't do. So it's about one is the hammer and one is the anvil. You know what I'm saying? And Mazrog is the anvil. Can he run out and hammer something? Yes. Can he run out and crump? Absolutely. Getting crit fives when you charge is fantastic. But in reality, the side of the board that Gaz is near for 12 inches is destroying your army on the wall turn. And people go, well, that's over optimizing the wall, which I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. But they would say that's over investing in the wall. That's the point is the wall needs to go off. You need to be able to punch through whatever is in front of you on the wall. If you whiff on your wall turn, that's game, set, and match. Sometimes if one you, one individual character with one model and his bodyguard stay alive, that can clap back an entire org unit if it's a strong unit. Yeah. You need to one-shot people. You know, when you're dealing with Wraith, Canoptic Court, yeah, yeah, cool, bro. I have knobs, unbridled carnage, lethal, sustained. You're gone, right? So it's it even through that, I've punched through some of that. So don't. It's not one which one is better. It's how are you building your list out. But Maz is significantly easier to use and get immediate value by himself. Yes. Okay. And he is cheaper than Gaz, right? But if you build your army around Gaz's capability, you can't build your army around the Maz capability. That is, can your opponent make the wrong choice of putting all his anti-tank fire into Maz? Ha ha, I won now. You get what I'm saying, guys? It's some people that I know will just see Maz and be like, I know I'm not going to kill him, so I'm just going to ignore him right now and try to kill the trucks, da-da-da. So better is subjective. How's your list playing out? What are you playing against? But is Maz easier to use and get immediate return for his points? Absolutely. Can you build an army and a turn and combos strictly based around Gaz and his capabilities? Absolutely. And Maz cannot reliably punch out a Catan. But Gaz being near a unit of Beast Nagger Boys with Unbridled Carnage can. So take it for what it is. Argue with me, uh, Happy Crumper, but I don't care because that's what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. And this Nod with Wall Banner, fantastic. Speaking of someone who loves Gaz's capability, right. Nod with Wall Banner absolutely loves it. So let's go. He says, the hobby is so much better now. Our start in third edition, basic boys were infantry models and they weren't metal. Ugh, yeah, that's horrible. Playing a three-way, uh, oh, a free-for-all three three for all of custodes and guard for break on lunch currently in the lead running 30 knobs in the war boss and a pain boy let's go 30 knobs let's go dude let's get this thing in yeah that's what i'm talking about just crumb them dude beat the crap out of them bring some boys back to life he said oh there's a nice one dude oh yeah that is an amazing that is amazing that you created the channel for that reason I am a long time orc player, but traditionally all the content, not that there was much of it, is very focused on competitive. Thank you. And you're exactly the sort of individual, all of you guys really that are here, but you're exactly the sort of individual that I relate to because it was like 
oh, I'm at work right now. Oh, I'm about the hobby. Let me put on some orc thing. And then I'm like, oh, uh, Salt and Black Reach supposedly has a lot of orcs. And you click it, a Black Templar. I dropped in and killed 500 orcs. It didn't even matter. And they broke my arm, but I killed them anyways with my broken arm. I'm like, shut up. Shut up, dude. You'd be dead if you got punched a billion times by an orc. You know that's not true because they can rip your head off. It's in lore, <laughs> dude, too. So this is absurd. You know, like, so I feel you. Or it's just like, look, man. Play with the free Buddhist attachment last edition, you know, last edition. Yeah. Play with the free Buddhist attachment, super OP. It's the best way to run orcs. I'm like, yeah, but I like to punch things too. Like, I like my tide, right? The kill rigs are awesome, dope, but you can't use anything else but a kill rig, right? And it's, it becomes redundant and it hurts and it doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense to us as a community to think that way, right? So many very good players. If you ever check out our Wild Wednesdays, when we go over orc lists, it's not because I even care for you guys to copy those lists. What it is to give you an archetype and an idea that the board is free to play when you're an orc. Your collection is always your collection. And it comes down to you being competent with your rules and your faction is where you get the most return, not what models you're using as an orc player necessarily. There are a couple key units you will want and need, knobs, flash kits, a war boss here and there. But that's not your whole army. That's like 500 points, right? What it really comes down to is, are you playing the rules army how they're supposed to be used? You can bring all the best data sheets, and then if you just make the wrong choices, you're just gone because your army doesn't work that way as an orc player. You can't just sit back and shoot people and do all stuff. You have to think, you're going to shoot me. I'm going to take damage. I have to control the damage I'm taking. I have to then have a clap back. I need to score. I need to still be able to stage, but I have to sacrifice something here. It, it gets crazy, and that's why the channel is here because it's, it's about all of that. So what is this? Ooh, speaking of what orc units are absolutely essential for competitive 40k i want to build my army but want to avoid some less competitive models first new to the hobby i only have the orc combat patrol so far all right so after i just did that rant nothing will make sense now no, i'm just kidding <laughs> no just right off the bat like i just said earlier maz easy to use easy for his points return boom start with a maz or if you have the kit the next thing to do just in case maz gets a super point increase in the codex you can magnetize the the maz rog and i was going to pull my maz rog but you can magnetize maz rog and just use the same mount and then just put the beast boss on on their stud that way you can just alternate between each one so it's a good kit for that reason so get a maz rog always having a couple trucks has never been a bad thing in, in the 40k or having a couple battle line type units because orcs are very much playing the primary or and or secondary just putting up points kind of army so anything that's going to help you just kind of score is going to be a decent addition to any orc collection so maybe get something with speed like a storm boy unit here or there basic battle line boys you want to also be building out a good collection because what's competitive at the time of this recording could be completely irrelevant when the in the, the codex drops yeah. so you could spend a uh, listen to me right now go out and buy all your stuff <laughs> then you come back you put it together and then none of it makes sense if i say just go get all squig hog boys right so what i'm going to tell you is orcs are meant to play you table me in five turns or i table you but ultimately the points are going to be high regardless because I need to put points up even if I'm getting killed. So go towards things that are just fundamental to playing the mission in the game, which is speed, mobility, and high OC. And then you move on to getting the elite stuff. Because by the time you put that together, Codex is going to drop. And you did good with the combat patrol. You got boys in there. You maybe get a war boss that can complement your boys. And then you can make, if you get more boys, you can make a mob. Get it what I'm saying? And then if you have to break it apart, you can now get a knob unit. Put that war boss over there. Put the boys in the truck. Stuff like that. There's one above that. Love your purple get Eddie. Whoa! And you got a snick right in your chat, of course, and you in your picture of WAP. So of course we appreciate that. Was that I miss on off? That one. Which one? That one. Huh? That was right above it. Oh. So I never realized I never really realized it until I came upon your channel. It's actually quite a rare take that one says, just get the stuff you like. You know what's in your meta, don't listen to all the noise, etc. Oh, thank you. And um, I know a lot of channels do say, like, get what you like, but then they tend to tell you what the meta is in their opinion. Um, you know, like, get triple beast bosses on Squigasaur. Like, bro, what? Like, yeah, that's right. doesn't even, that's even, imagine if you did that. You would just be, what? Do what? I mean, two would make sense, right? But then if you automatically just do three, then you're really kind of stuck putting all those guys on your list every time. You just start the collection. So it's always, I think people are quite competent, right? And just in general in 40K because there's a, there's a bar to entry to understand and play 40k and be a hobbyist. So automatically, a lot of you guys have my respect there, right? 
Therefore, I understand that you know what you're fighting against and you know your opponent's rules. So get what you like into that. And I'm giving you general understanding, general um, an agreement on what's good based off what's identified as a good data sheet. And then you can choose, I don't like how it looks, but I can get something close. This is why it's good. So I'll read the rules and find something else that's similar. That's really what it's about. And then at the end of the day, if you still like it, you'll hobby it up and you know, you'll have, you'll have success because you chose to play something that wasn't optimal, but because you became well-rounded in the general rules, you became a better player at the end of it. That's why I suggest that as well. John Anto is actually a perfect example of that. So he says, he says, uh, I need a commitment to push myself for hobbying and I'm pretty good at with kit bashing. I do streaming or crawl up streaming if it helps. He needs commitment to push myself to streaming. Yeah. They're hobbying. He's asking if he want to co collab or something. Maybe eventually. I'm, I'm don't know how to do that yet. Um, what I'm gonna say is because we have the chat and stuff, you can do. We like um, Jay said earlier in the chat. I remember he said we should have challenges for right. kit bashes and stuff. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we can start with challenges, and then if you're a winner, we show it, and you win, and like in that regard. So, still a good suggestion um and everything so i appreciate that very cool i appreciate no givens because you're awesome every time he says have some fungal some fungal beer on me you gets yeah channel pony you know i will <laughs> yeah because i just had coffee sorry <clears throat> and water oops he said there's a long there's a lot of strong units yeah find what you want to play it is find more where you want to play is actually another point uh to be fair i had to sub you taught me how to play 40k with black templars oh what <laughs> is that uh who we met at adepticon is that alex from adepticon is that the uh, black templar guy or are you just saying i taught you how to play 40k with black templars because you guys are almost similar that's hilarious right or is he saying that he learned how to play yeah. 40k with someone who plays black templar okay he, i don't know he, I'm, not, we're, I'm not very literate so either either go. way that's a it's a compliment it. regardless thank you for subbing and collecting a channel membership um interested in both actually any advice on the play and the two play styles i think they're talking about what styles you guys the chat can kind of get you more into that but or you know when we do the videos and archetypes you can join the discord and we'll elaborate more mm -hmm. on that or you can just add a clear direct question and i answer and then he said is thraka better than maz no that's it's i would say maz is easier to use for immediate return but gaz you can make your whole army around his army wide capability mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. is it easier to use Maz? Yes. Does he have points where he just goes off and he's more reliable? Yes. But if you understand what Gaz's actual capabilities is and his utility is, which is Makari, right, then you can actually take off on that. So um, we've seen Liz do great with Thraka for those reasons that I stated above, especially when Katans were coming around. You're like, oh, yeah, I got some Beast Nagger boys that are full rerolling to hit that are auto wounding you on fives. And they're like, what? Wait, what? Did you, did you just put 40 wounds into me? I'm like, yeah, enjoy that. Mm, and then they're gone. You know, like, so, yeah, I get it. You know, I would think, but here's the thing. You can bring both. Yeah, um, we've seen that and, plenty. And I think gas can go down in points. So uh, if there's what's better, I think just for point costs, then yeah, Maz is better in that regard. But you don't build a whole army around Maz necessarily. Maz right. just gives you immediate return and he's a plug and play, which is what the top level players like. They like something that just goes out there and is easy to plug and play. What do you say? He says, for oh, me personally, nice. I think the board control style, aka mass small units, is easier to learn versus the more elite fighter yeah. style. Just have to get games in, honestly. Yeah, that's true. You'll know what you like. And John Anto is, was running more of that trash style when he did good. So there we are. He says, I don't care if it's matter or not. I'll always run a truck filled with my burner boys. Yeah, there we <laughs> yeah, go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, dude. I like that burner boys have AP when they punch. <clears throat> right. That's I'm nice. Honest, I love that. He said, "That's proper talk, Alex." He says, "If you have a combat, okay, you guys got that. Yeah, buy combat patrol, uh, buy Mega Knight. That's a good point because you already have the big <laughs> war boss and Mega Armor there." Do, do, do. Oh, Alex, yeah, yeah, okay, Alex. He says, "From your local war store." He says, "No, you taught me." Yeah. Oh, okay. no, yeah, yeah. Literally. Okay, <laughs> Alex, you found the channel. What's up? Get mm, shout out to Alex. Yeah, Alex. Uh, we went, like I was telling you about the same gw shop which is awesome i know some of you guys have different things to say about gw shops me and david only exist because of a gw shop a legit one where the guys were so attentive 
so caring, so helpful. The community, everybody was super nice and lovely. Yeah. They cared about the narrative scheme. They were willing to help and be involved and do anything to keep everybody around. So I have nothing ever bad to say about a games workshop store because the only ones I've ever been to were the only reason I still exist as a hobbyist. Um, that being said, Alex actually came from there too. He was new and I wanted to return the love. And I was like, Black Templars, bro, let's learn how to play 40K. We got to keep you around. If you're picking Black Templars as your first army, you know, and so now he's uh, well rounded and now he has a bunch of armies and I seen him again at the shop. So I'm glad you showed up, homie, and you got stuck in, you know, because I appreciate you like you're showing you appreciate me. Let's go. He said I had to sub. You don't have to sub because of that, but thank you. And yeah, I did teach you one on one. So I hope you learned something. He says, I saw um, this, sorry. I saw a channel that took submissions for fan made Space Marine loyalist chaos chapters. Have you guys considered letting subscribers submit lore for homebrew or war bands? Could be fun. If the lore videos and such go off, how they how they hopefully could successfully go off, we could start a whole new channel based off just lore, and then that would very much become there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm open to it because I'm open to lore, right? So very, very cool. And then here, certainly last but not certainly not least, was actually John Anto's display board where he made old McDonald's farm. He took the farm off, but see where these hay bales are and squigs? That's actually a barn, like a pen. Yeah. So he has that in there. It looks <laughs> sick. He made an AOS model in that corner with Mazrog, and there's a trough over there in the top left corner where they were actually uh, uh, eating out of a big pail of junk and gunk. And then all of these grot bikers, all these boys that are picking up this farm are have pitchforks and stuff like that and they have little hats and then john was wearing the hat himself too and then the truck he put hay bales and he put hay in the back so this is what i mean john anto he made a display board with these units but when he actually played at adepticon he did not bring any of these squig hog boys you know <laughs> so he had them they were all painted he could have brought them he literally was just like i'm good i just want to play with what i want to play and he did yeah, and there was the other also uh he had a death dread just from oh, the torso cut up yes. as a scarecrow. Dang, I can't believe I didn't put I didn't put that on here. I yeah. messed up. Sorry, John. The, it's, you can see the post right there. Those two little candles on the picture on the left. He put he took the scare the Death Dread's legs off and was aided to post it up right there. And it's right. a Death Dread scarecrow. That was fantastic. Uh, Thanks for my favorite part was uh he had a little outhouse too. And the door opened up and I'm just... showing these pictures again. I'm gonna put these pictures again in Discord. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I just failed to. me. They're, just they're... Why didn't we fail him? He was we have him. Yeah, we do. So yeah, that's actually not a bad idea, McFatson. And yeah, that's what's it. Oops, and that was John Otto's list. So look at it. So he got eighth place. He still made a display board, still had fun. This is what I'm talking about. This is why guys like John and the rest of you gets are so super relatable because you guys love the whole hobby. You're not just stuck on being competitive. That's not how people who are attracted to Orc necessarily think. And then we're getting here near the end. This is, I think, the last this second. Awesome. This is the last picture <laughs> of a lovely battle wagon. Because like I said, I love battle wagons. So happy Easter you get. Let's go because Orcs never beaten Harry. I also see you also uh, looking gray. So if you're a gray homie, collect that membership if you can. Black Templars Marines. I have decided to give up on my casual racism. I've upgraded to competitive. <laughs> <laughs> For my beast naga loving get Sigmar Iron Jaws model make great proxies or models for your kit bashing potential, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you to everyone that was here and that is a new member. This is the raffle. We're going to get the raffle off, off, off on this. Uh, shout out. We're going to have the John Otto interview out on Monday. So thank you for that. To anybody who listens to get stuck in on that, be sure to leave a comment, a like, throw in some ideas if you want for Lori, either to me or to the Discord. The Discord is on our YouTube. You click it and go all the way to the right to what the social part. Or uh, it's on the description of this video as yeah. well. Every video has that. Mm -hmm. So we'll get in there, boys. Stick in. Uh, get stuck in from Wild Wednesdays too. We always get in there. We are we are talk back in there, and you guys can see all the different lists. If you wonder if your kill wig works, if you wonder if your battle wagon works, if you wonder if Snick Rot and Mandos work, the answer is yes. And I've showed it. It's not just my anecdotes, right? So we got this. You guys got this. And we appreciate you being here. Happy Easter, and I appreciate you loving the channel. But there's always one thing to keep in mind. is don't cross our wall, because we knock your teeth out. Whoa!